obviously probably it is very difficult so i i i change the subject because even for me it was difficult so i change the subject to dvt and treatment of dvt pulmonary edema the like that so we have to modify accordingly right but it it, it requires really the last few hours uh, the day before re uh, requires really hard work from books and net and what not so should we start now sir Yes, yes, good evening, sir. I think uh, we. I just spoke to Dr. Madhu from JSS. Sir should be joining any time now. But he has asked. Ibrahim, Ibrahim sir is joining. Can Ibrahim, sir, where are you right now? Back. Sir, I am back in Chennai. Sir, back in Chennai. Okay, okay, okay. Sir, good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Thank you for joining from theatre. Hello, Jalal, sir. How are you? Fine, fine, sir. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. Can I, sir, back in India? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Back to India. Back to India. Okay, nice. Kanna sir, good evening. Good evening, sir. Kanna sir. Good evening, sir. So I think we are already on time. We'll start. Um, we will. Uh, uh, we also have Dr. Shantosh uh, Anand. He is a gastroenterologist. Uh, sir is from right now with Apollo Chennai. So he is a student of Chipmer. Uh, I think, uh, sir, Shantosh sir, you are uh, Dr. Srinivasan student also, right? No. Yes, sir. Doctor Medical. Yes, yes, yes. So, thank you for joining, sir. Uh, we will have the presentation from uh, BJ Medical College, Dr. Amik Rati. Uh, he's kindly contributed by Professor Pankaj Modi. Uh, he's a case of surgical jaundice. Uh, Dr. Amik will be presenting now. And um, I am sure Dr. Anil Herur and uh, Dr. Madhu will be joining us shortly. But I request the faculty to please take over. Amik, you please introduce yourself. Uh, you are uh, assistant professors and you are head of the department and start your presentation. Yes, sir. Good evening, everyone. Uh, myself, Dr. Anik Rati. I'm third year general surgery resident at BJ Medical College under guidance of Dr. Pankaj Modi, sir. Uh, we, uh, currently in our unit, we are the Friday surgical unit with uh, four consultants. Dr. Pankaj Modi, sir, uh, as the head of unit. Dr. Malik Mehta, sir. Dr. Hardik Bhatt, sir. And Dr. Dipali Sadhu, ma'am, as the assistant professors in the unit, sir. Today, uh, I'll be presenting the case on obst obstructive jaundice. Yes, sir. So, so uh, my case is of a 60-year-old Muslim male patient uh, working as a tea seller belonging to the upper lower socio-economic class in Ahmedabad admitted for chief complaints of yellow discoloration of eyes since two months, clay-colored stool since two months, itching since one and a half month, and weight loss and anorexia associated since the last two months. The patient presented to us on OPD basis. On further uh, asking the history, the patient presented with a complaint of yellow discoloration of eyes since two months, which was gradually progressing in intensity and subsequently involving the extremities as well. The patient also had a complaint of generalized itching since one and a half month and clay colored stool since two months and weight loss of approximately 10 kilograms in the last two months associated with anorexia as well. The patient had no history of abdominal pain, no history of nausea or vomiting or ab any abdominal distension, no history of fever, hematemesis, any bleeding per rectum or black passage of any black colored stool was there. In uh, past history, there was his uh, history of being operated for left ankle injury 35 years ago. But patient is not a known case of diabetes mellitus, hypertension or tuber uh, tuberculosis. No past history of jaundice. There is no history of any chronic drug usage or any blood transfusions in the past. The patient has been a chronic alcoholic since the last 25 years, is a tobacco chewer since 15 years and has no alterations in the bowel or bladder habits. And there is no significant family history uh, as well. Sir, in summary, uh, I'm presenting a case of a 60-year-old alcoholic Muslim male patient with painless jaundice, clay-colored stool, itching, weight loss, and anorexia. Most probably obstructive jaundice due to uh, malignant etiology. Uh, okay, Anik, uh, yes, sir. Uh, how do you how do you know that there is weight loss? Uh, sir, uh, the, yes, sir, the, I asked the patient if his clothes had uh, loosened over time. The, and uh, also the patient specifically mentioned that he has been feeling weak and the uh, his 
Uh, trousers ஒரு Uh, yes sir uh, during this admission it was 62 kilograms okay and he said there is no pain yes, sir painless yes, jaundice yes sir is the jaundice progressive uh, yes sir the jaundice is progressive the, he has have mentioned, mentioned that earlier on have you mentioned it that is progressive jaundice uh, yes sir in uh, origin duration progress i have mentioned uh, it is gradually prog- progressing in intensity eventually involving the extremities uh, the hands and the limbs as well okay so what are the causes of painful jaundice then painful progressive sir, jaundice painful progressive jaundice sir it can be due to uh, any uh, in, due to inflammatory pathologies it can be there sir for example in cases of uh, in all in uh, some disturbance sir someone speaking okay sir in cases of cholelithiasis there might be progressive jaundice which might be uh, associated with colic pain any other cause sir there might uh, in cases of uh, so inflammation of the head of pancreas for in case of acute pancreatitis there might be uh, due to compression over the distal cbd so would that cause uh, progressive jaundice no 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 any periampillary uh, malignancies which can be pain we can cause painful progressive obstructive jaundice so very um, i'm not aware sir can okay. see ahead ankit uh, i need to know what is the status of his urine you have not mentioned about the urine color sir uh, there is the yellow discoloration of urine deepening of the color yes sir okay so can you just elaborate on the urine color whether it was uh, continue uh, always yellow color or in between getting normal color oh uh, no sir uh, it has been yellow colored since last that since the last two months sir so ankit uh, why is the urine dark in in obstructive jaundice sir in cases of obstructive jaundice there is no passage <laughs> yeah gone the, there is no passage of the bile pigments into the bowel into the duodenum which causes increased uh, increased circulation of conjugated bilirubin in the blood which is filtered by the kidneys and uh... no no hang on hang on hang on you, on one hand you are saying that uh, there is no uh, bilirubin in the bowel yes sir so how has that related to urine because there will be no urobilinogen then so why is the urine dark dark now so uh, that is due to increase in the conjugated bilirubin okay which... so what happens to that sir uh, in cases of obstructive jaundice the concent- the concentration of the conjugated bilirubin in the uh, in the blood increases which is so? filtered by the, uh, filtered by the glomeruli okay so there you so the answer should be that there is increased bilir- uh, bilirubin in the urine isn't it yes yes sir in- yes sir increase uh, filtration of bilirubin in the right. urine so so if you test the urine and you find bilirubin there and no urobilinogen you yes, will know sir. that it is obstructive jaundice obstructive jaundice yes sir so please sir. so i i am telling that this is a jaundice happening because of uh, cirrhosis because patient is a chronic alcoholic so it's uh, i'm telling it is a painless jaundice uh, because of cirrhosis of the liver so how you will uh, substantiate using the history alone sir so, uh, so if the patient has, uh, has a cirrhotic liver he would there would be uh, sir symptoms of 
there would be signs and symptoms, other symptoms of liver cirrhosis, such as there would be port, there might be portal hypertension. There would, if there would have been a history of hematemesis. Uh, so, can you just elaborate the symptoms of uh, progressive liver cell failure due to cirrhosis? Sir, sim uh, symptoms can be there. Might be redness over the palms. Uh, as we say, there might be. Uh, what what is that called as redness over the palms? Have palmer, you ever seen palmer palmer erythema? Okay. Have you ever seen that palmer erythema? No, sir. I'm not. Sure. We can't see in Indians. We cannot see that. Okay. Only in fair skin people we will be able to see. What else? E easy signs, easy symptoms of portal hypertension or cirrhosis. So the patient might present with uh, complaints of either hem uh, hem hematemesis or bleeding per rectum. In the liver, okay, there, even, uh, a, even a periampullary cancer also can present with uh, bleeding per rectum, right? Yes, sir. Periampullary cancer can. Okay. So, what is this uh, jaundice happening due to? This uh, classical feature happening due to a periampullary cancer and a CA head of pancreas. Uh, the periampullary cancer, you can take it as a terminal CBD growth and a CA head of pancreas. What is the difference history-wise? Sir, history-wise, in the distal uh, common bile duct malignancy, uh, there would be history of waxing and waning of the jaundice. Yeah, there, correct. There would be sloughing of the uh, tumor material, which would cause uh, reduction in an increase in the jaundice whereas in case of head of pancreas there would be progressively increasing jaundice yes. uh, and uh, in periampullary malignancies there might also be history of melina present whereas there uh, no such history would uh, generally corroborate with head of pancreas malignancy sir. no there will be waxing and waning of what will be there jaundice jaundice yes sir okay jaundice if the patient for example in this patient you are having you do a stent now and relieve the obstruction. How long it will take for the jaundice to clear? Sir, it would take approximately 14 days for the jaundice to clear. So, 48 days. 14 so days. So, the, vac the waxing and waning is usually not seen in jaundice, but it is seen in the clay-colored stool. How will patient tell you that he had uh, uh, observed uh, this waxing waning yeah. phenomenon? This is what sir is asking. So the patient would say that uh, <coughs> the the, uh, the, depth, uh, the yellow color of the eyes gradually decrease, uh, decreases. No, it, in, no, no, it, no, it no, takes long. It takes long. long. No, the duration of John days, you yourself told that it will be 48 days. So for the waxing and waning in 48 days period, the patient, it's very difficult. What else you see? So what is the other symptom you told? For this patient, very important symptom. Which patient observes? The clay colored stool. That yeah. is one. So, so the patient would say that uh, he passes normal yellow colored stool in between, but the jaundice is still present. The yellow discoloration of eyes being present at the same time. Color of urine? Will it? The color of the change? color of urine just remains yellow. So what, what is this jaundice and ictrus? What is the difference? Jaundice, ictrus, you are telling two things. What is that? Sir, ictrus is, uh, we, are, we are, we are, ictrus is yellowish discoloration of the sclera. Uh, as a and sign. what is jaundice? The jaundice can, is yellowish discoloration of the uh, various tissues. It can be it first identified in the frenulum of the tongue. Then the sclera, the yellowish discoloration of the, jaundice is basically, uh, Okay. Uh, of the, of increased uh, jaundice, what is jaundice? So, uh, jaundice is the, uh, yellowish discoloration uh, of the tissues of the body due to increased uh, bilirubin concentration in the blood. So, which one comes first, jaundice or the ictrus? Uh, Are these synonyms? Or is there a difference? Look, so ictrus can be, look, Anik, ictrus yes. or yellowish color discoloration can be because of bilirubin and other causes. You get yes, me? Sir. Well, jaundice is because of increased bilirubin. Yes, sir. 
Yes, sir. What is what is latent jaundice? Uh, you hear me? I don't know. Yes, latent sir. Latent jaundice. I what, don't is know, sir. what is the normal bilirubin level? Sir, normally bilirubin level uh, is less than uh, total bilirubin less than zero one point five milligrams per deciliter, sir. Okay, in latent bilirubin is slight increase biochemical increase in serum bilirubin, but clinically you may not be able to make out the jaundice, isn't it? Yes. That is called as latent jaundice. But what do you mean that word? Supposing commonly we say oh, this patient is ectric. Isn't it? There is a common terminology that patient is ectric, then patient is jaundice. Uh, other professors have said, when you mean ectric, the patient is jaundiced, isn't it? Yes. So that's the general terminology we use, isn't it? Most of the students when they saw the patient is ectric. Hmm? Okay, where else you look for jaundice clinically apart from sclera? Sir, uh, we can look at the frenulum of the tongue. Then, or under, uh, sur under surface of the tongue. Under surface of the tongue, yes, sir. Uh, yes. Sir, other than that, we, we can look for it uh, in the, in cases of very uh, very high bilirubin levels. We can also identify yellowish discoloration of the skin in fair skin okay. uh, patients, sir. Okay, okay. Why, it's more evident. You get the uh, sclera to get the jaundice first. Sorry, uh, sir, sclera skin. has sir, sclera has high elastin fibers, high concentration of elastin fibers, which have a high affinity for bilirubin. Hence, Anything else? It, that's a good point. Anything else? One more. Sir, another point, the sclera having an opaque background is totally white, which increases the contrast for... Why, why it is totally white? The sclera has no melanin pigment. So, invariably, the pigmentation, melanin pigment is the reason why it uh, blur the development. So, to suppose you, you say that the jaundice to occur in the sclera, it has to be more than around three. And how much it should be for the skin? Sir, to be in the skin, it has to be more than 7 to 8 milligrams per deciliter. More than 6, so it has to be there. So the, the two reasons, one is because of the elastin, which has the, uh, especially you have the uh, high, bilirubin has a high affinity for this elastin, and the sclera has large quantity of elastin. Second, the sclera has no melanin pigment, so it will okay. not be able to blur the, the color change. So that's why you are obviously able to see that color. Here. Yes. What is Thomas what is the difference said? between Intermittent jaundice and a waxing when in jaundice? Sir, in, in, in intermittent jaundice, uh, there would be, uh, the patient would be free of symptoms uh, in between. There would be no jaundice, there would be a time phase when there would be no jaundice. Whereas in waxing and waning, uh, the jaundice would decrease but still, still would be present, sir. Can you give the example of the intermittent jaundice and the waxing when in jaundice? Sir, it, intermittent jaundice can be uh, seen in uh, cholangitis. Most com uh, most commonly, uh, vaccine can be the presentation of many things. But what can be the cause for that? Cholangitis okay. is a presentation of the various things, isn't it? There might, yes, sir. There might be passage of uh, common bile ducts, calculi. <coughs> it would relieve symptoms intermittently. So one you said is a colidopolithiasis, isn't it? Colidopolithiasis. Yes, sir. So that is one. What are the other causes of intermittent jaundice? Do you know mm -hmm. any condition where something comes in the bile duct and then it goes away and then again it comes in bile duct? So, ascariasis? Yes, ascariasis. So, if you are staying in Kashmir area, Jammu Kashmir area, that will be the first diagnosis, in fact. Okay, after the colidopolithiasis, that will be the first diagnosis. Now, does your patient has got a Charcot's triad or not? Uh, no, sir. There was the patient has no complaint of any abdominal uh, pain, fever, or jaundice. Uh, sorry, jaundice is there, but progressively increasing jaundice, but no fever or abdominal pain, sir. Okay. But can yes, you tell what are the causes of the Charcot's triad? Sure. Uh, in Charcot's triad, sir, the, the patient complains of intermittent pain due to col uh, colic spasmodic pain of the bile duct. There might be fever. Uh, due to stasis of the bile duct, which gets relieved on passage uh, of the bile. That is, tell the causes. 
what are yeah. the various causes which can lead to the this triad yeah. one is the polydopolithiasis isn't yes sir polydopolithiasis right. is yeah, tell the other there, causes there might be it might be due to cholecystitis as well no no yes see yes it can also <laughs> that yes any other causes a patient who has got increase in the bowel frequency and also the patient is having the hepatite infective uh, hepatitis might be there anything is specific to that you know you heard about the sclerosing cholangitis yes sir primary sclerosing cholangitis or primary or secondary you know yes sir Yeah, so it can occur in that also. Now tell yes. what are the causes of that the sclera is yellow but the urine is white. Sir, it might be due to uh, increase in indirect uh, bilirubin, unconjugated bilirubin. Which so tell the causes for that. Yeah. Yes, sir. Uh, these would be uh, sir. it would occur in hip, uh, viral etiologies of the liver such as in hepatitis no in viral hepatitis you always get both the things are yellow urine is also yellow as well as the sclera is also yellow any specific type of the jaundice where you get the yellow sclera but the white urine i don't know sir what are the various varieties of the jaundice what are the three varieties of the jaundice Sir, it can be divided into pre-hepatic, hepatic, and uh, post-hepatic jaundice. So, in, uh, tell in the pre-hepatic, what will happen? Sir, in pre-hepatic jaundice, there would be. Uh, what is the other name hepatic. of the pre-hepatic variety? Sir, it might. What is the other name of the pre-hepatic variety? Uh, increased hemolysis would be there. And so, what type of the jaundice it is called as? Uncon. Hemolytic jaundice. Hemolytic jaundice. Yes. So, what will happen in the hemolytic jaundice? Sir, in hemolytic jaundice, the concentration of uh, unconjugated bilirubin is uh, more as compared is uh, due to exhaustion of the liver enzymes. As so, can it happen in hemolytic jaundice that the sclera is yellow and the urine is white, and that is why it is called as? Yes. Sir. What is the other name of that? Sir, I'm not aware. Sir. Coloric, coloric, a coloric jaundice. Coloric, what is that? Color. Yeah. A coloric jaundice, isn't? Yes, sir. A coloric. Now tell the condition where the sclera is white but the urine is yellow. Sir, it can commonly occur. Uh, it can occur in case of dehydration, firstly. Yes, dehydration. Maybe concentration of urine. Yes. the commonest cause of having the yellow slight yellow urine but the sclera is white so uh, if the patient is on and uh, anti tubercular drugs yes it can occur because of that something more common drug which is many of us take many of the patient will say that oh, i am taking this drug so some increase in nutrition or increase your the stamina or something you take some b complex <laughs> some b complex or anti accidents any b complex na no? yes any b complex you are taking you will find the urine is getting yellow there no? na and in fact the commonest cause of the yellow urine is your first sample everyone the first sample which is passed in the first time is slightly yellow there no? na yes okay okay in a in an obstructive jaundice in the late stage what will be the color of the eye sir it would be uh, in obstructive jaundice in late stage is greenish yellow color or, or, or that color is due to so that is color to, sorry sir is it due to bilirubin uh, no uh, yes sir. all of bilirubin gets con uh, converted to biliverdin as well uh, due to prolonged Love. in the it, though the bilirubin okay. forms early but in the late stage also you get the more of bilirubin that is why you are getting that brownish uh, that deep color you can pigmentation suppose the patient in the pediatric age group you see the they give phototherapy you know for the newborns 
So what yes, type sir. of pigment it produces? So I heard that lumirubin. Yes, sir. Lumirubin. Like lumirubin, bilirubin. It is uh, sensitized to lumirubin. That is the mm -hmm. that will produce the element. So all these three are part of the white uh, pigments you are going to get. Yes, you know what is the highest level of bilirubin which yeah. can be reached usually? Uh, in obstructive jaundice, what will be the maximum level of bilirubin which can be reached? The last three years you might have seen obstructive jaundice, no? 30 yes. milligram or 40 and how much is the maximum you can go? Sir? 40 milligram. I have maximum I've seen 14. Okay, so yeah, you are right. It's around 40 to 45 milligrams. But why does it stop there? Obstruction is progressive, but it stops. Why does that occur? Sir, uh, it, it might occur due to the exhaustion of the liver enzymes. But anything else? And the patient will start saying, now my uri, my stool is getting yellow now. Though the progress, the disease is progressing. <coughs> and he will start saying that from the clay colored stool, it is getting now yellow. I don't know, sir. It is because of the exfoliation of the, from the, usually from the proximal small intestine, there is exfoliation is there. And that is why that start coming into the gut, into the lumen of that. And that's why the stool starts becoming yellow there. And that is why it's a plateau which is there around 40 to 40. Uh, usually. Oh, preferably don't use the term clay color. The clay color is, uh, normal clay is not that. What do you, what do you actually, what is going to ask for the patient? Uh, Whitish, pale color stool. Uh, Whatever the color he has, you know, which people that they, they have the, some color, but there is a change of the paleness or the, the lightening of that color is more significant than color. using the term as a clay, because the clay different in, color is different in different parts. Yes, sir. So you told about uh, pruritus, right? Yes, sir. Patient has pruritus. Sir. So, can you just spell the word pruritus? P R U R I T I S. Yeah. So, it is not an inflammation. So, it is not pruritus. T I S. It is T U S. Pruritus. Okay. Okay. The you have to keep it in mind. And why does this pruritus happen? Sir, uh, pruritus occurs mainly due to increase in the bile salts in the blood, namely. Uh, Arsodeoxycholic acid and the cholic acid, which causes increase, uh, which get deposited in the dermis of the skin, which causes itching associated with his uh, histamine release in the subcutaneous region. So, which happens first? The jaundice, yellowish discoloration, or the pruritus? Which happens first? So, the yellowish discoloration occurs first, followed by uh, pruritus, sir. Okay. So, sir was asking about what is the highest amount of bilirubin you have seen. So, can you just tell me in uh, these three years, you are in the final year? Yes, sir. Sir, maximum I have seen uh, is uh, sir, 35 milligrams per deciliter. Sir. Okay. What happens after that? If the bilirubin continues to increase, there is no loss of uh, bilirubin from the body. It continues to increase. The blood level of bilirubin is increasing. What happens beyond that level? Does it enter? continues to increase, but it is not increasing. There must be some reason. No? Yes, the, the bilirubin does not increase due to exfoliation at the distal, uh, distal CBD in the proximal uh, bowel, sir, sir mentioned. No, that is the answer for why that, in the late stage you get a color can be there. Sir, on further increasing in bilirubin, it leads to carnicterus. It starts crossing the blood-brain barrier, sir, causing mental status changes as well. So, what is chronic press? The adult, you get that? Sir, not in adults, sir. And it, it, uh, it is due to increase in unconjugated bilirubin mode. Chronic press is basic. Yes, sir. So, what happens in adults? So, it continues to increase. Where does it get deposited? Do you see any extracranial symptoms?
I'm not aware, sir. So, in any case of liver cell failure, post obstructive jaundice, where the patient is inoperable, how how do they succumb? How do they succumb? Inoperable uh, obstructive jaundice. So, increase in the level of uh, bilirubin in the blood. What causes? What harmful it ca harm it causes to the body? I have not seen so. So, any action of uh, this bilirubin on uh, heart rate? So, bilirubin decreases the heart rate. It, uh, sir, uh, it acts at the uh, SA node, thus decreasing the act its activity, causing decrease in the heart rate, sir. Okay. And uh, you have told about some treatment history. There was uh, some ankle procedure done 35 years. 35 so, is years. it any, yes. any relevance? Any relevance to that? No, sir. Okay. So, what will be the relevant treatment history you have to see in jaundice cases? Sir, firstly, I would like to know if there is any past history of jaundice in the uh, yeah, previously, if there is any chronic drug usage, for example, some drugs which are causing jaundice, for example, as in valproate, sir, then in if he's previously operated, then I would like to know if he has had jaundice in the past, there might be anesthetic drugs causing jaundice, such as halothin, then uh, any history of blood transfusions, if there that would help me to rule out uh, hemolytic causes of jaundice in this uh, in a patient. Sir. So other then, than that, most important thing is all these jaundice patients will have some kind of native treatment. So yes. you have to ask for any native treatments previously. So it varies depending upon the area. Some will have some branding in the wrist some branding or piercing, something like that. So, this native treatment history has to be asked. Yes, sir. So, can you just enumerate, uh, elaborate some of the drugs which causes jaundice, drug-induced jaundice? So, drug-induced jaundice can most commonly uh, due to anti-tubercular medications. So, uh, Rifampicin isoniazid are known for causing hepatitis. Then uh, there might be jaundice due to valproate if the patient has any history of convulsions. Uh, halothin is also known uh, known to cause halothin hepatitis if he has any previous history of any operation done under general anesthesia. Then, uh, okay, any uh, role of alcoholism in head of pancreas growth? Sir, uh, if the patient uh, being chronic alcoholic, I would suspect if the if the patient would have had any history of uh, uh, acute pancreatitis, any pancreatic insult, which uh, so might be a risk uh, risk factor, which might point towards pancreatic malignancy. Yeah, actually, alcoholism doesn't have any direct etiology over uh, head of pancreas growth, so it is mainly the pancreatitis. Yes, sir. Okay. So, what is Thomas sign now, doctor? What is Thomas? Sir, Tom, Thomas sign is passage of sir, sir, silver starry colored urine, uh, stool, which is due to, uh, which is generally found in periampullary malignancies due to mixing of uh, sloughed out uh, mucosa, uh, that uh, blood with the pale colored stool, sir. Okay. Uh, in history, you should also mention uh, presence or presence <coughs> of. Uh, uh, symptoms like malaise, fever, all those one month before or two, three weeks before the appearance of jaundice. Why? What is its relevance? What are what are these symptoms called as? So, uh, fever, malaise. Con the, these can be called the constitutional symptoms. They might uh, point towards any inflammatory overlying pathology. So, so for viral hepatitis or something, so prodromal symptoms, or as you said, uh, uh -huh. it is important to, to have mentioned that. Okay. Yes, sir. You summarized nicely, but uh, in your summary, kindly include the word progressive, which is very important. Okay. Yes, sir. Can we go to the examination, please? Yeah. Yes, sir. Sir, on, uh, in general examination, I have examined the patient with adequate light and exposure with proper consent. The patient is conscious, cooperated and well-oriented to time, place and person. He, he is moderately built. Sir, ECUG score is 2 for the patient. Temperature is normal. 
patient uh, pulse is normal blood pressure is 130 by 80 millimeters of mercury sir uh, icterus is present uh, though there is no pedal edema no cyanosis or clubbing no generalized lymphadenopathy and no other signs suggestive of liver failure are present sir on per abdomen examination sir the patient is flat abdomen central inverted umbilicus there are multiple superficial scratch marks present over both the flanks there is no visible lump or swelling no scar sinus any pigmentation or dilated veins the hernia sites are normal and the external genitalia are normal sir on palpation sir uh, sir i uh, the temperature is normal there is no tenderness eh? there is a well defined globular mass in the right hypochondriac region which is palpable with smooth surface it is non tender firm in consistency moving with respiration and sir upper border is not palpable the spleen and uh, liver both are not palpable on percussion sir the liver dullness is present 14 cm in the mid clavicular line and 15 cm in the anterior axillary line no no free fluid is present on auscultation there is no uh, normal peristalsis sir no adventitious sounds are present on sir per rectal examination there is clay colored uh, stool staining is present there is normal linal tone no palpable growth or any prostatectomy gel there is no left supraclavicular lymphadenopathy sir uh, other systemic examinations are normal sir uh, on summarizing there is a 60 year old alcoholic muslim male with painless progressive jaundice clay colored stool itching weight loss and anorexia over the past two months on examination there is uh, jaundice is present with a non tender lump in right hypochondriac region probably gall bladder with the spleen and liver being not palpable sir uh, anek i just like yes, to sir. say that in your examination you have said everything about about the gall bladder beside instead of saying this just the gall bladder you can see the no, no liver no spleen you can say the lump palpable is a gall bladder rather than beating around the bush moving its respiration mm-hmm. globular in shape all that just say gall bladder you've done it in the in your summary you can see it there mm-hmm. also yes sir mm-hmm. what about the mobility of the gall bladder since you mentioned all the findings you said the lower border is palpable it's okay it is non tender would you be able to hold the gallbladder and do a little bit of transverse mobility invariably that will be present isn't it yes sir the or, uh, medial and lateral if, borders were palpable sir uh, you will be able to hold it laterally the sidewards and you will be able to move it isn't it sideward that is an important sign as far as the palpable gallbladder is concerned i don't think what your percussion note did you mention in that area the percussion note continues dull note continues over the Gall bladder. Gall bladder. Yeah. I have not mentioned. Uh, Ankit, gall bladder is a one, an enlarged gall bladder is a one, which is better seen than felt. So in your inspection, you told uh, nothing about the visual seeing of the gall bladder. Usually, when the abdomen Sorry. is flat, and if if you mm-hmm. examine the patient with along with the respiration, you'll be able to see a glob globular swelling in the right hypochondrial region. okay and another thing is the you have told about with such a deep jaundice i don't think the pulse rate will be 76 have you measured it yes sir okay so usually we'll, yeah usually we'll have a very good bradycardia with such deep jaundice so in and, what uh, condition such a deep jaundice patient can have uh, uh, this uh, black, uh, pulse rate sir in uh, such a deep jaundice the patient might have features of cholangitis due to biliary stasis which might cause taking well, uh, uh, relative greedy cardiac your patient huh? when you suspect cholangitis you must have explained there is a fever you have never said there is a fever no, no sir no fever so is present your patient how it comes to the 70 and how you will be explained that so by all means not only by sa note they will have a direct regular tonic effect it all reduces the pulse rate You have to little. Maybe you have to explain that it is anxious. You are examining. You are as a foreign. Uh, I mean, uh, the neighbor you are explaining or examining the patient. That always increases the anxiety to the patient. Yes, sir. So that can sometimes increase. But you must be careful enough to put that. Yes, sir. You have put the last word as a patient is alcoholic. Why do you want to brand yes, him as an alcoholic? Oh uh, yes, sir. The patient has what been taking. What do you mean by alcoholic? 
the patient has been taking alcohol since the past 25 years and in this case uh, uh, is there alcohol dependence alcohol is this, is there alcohol dependence yes sir the patient uh, is dependent on alcohol. alcohol yes sir he needs to take alcohol uh, a daily physical dependence in alcohol only then you must use the term otherwise you must yes, say he consumes alcohol he can consume alcohol daily and not be an alcoholic okay? yes also don't mention the religion until it has got something to do with the with the case please right never yes, label sir. anyone like that yes sir okay uh, how will you proceed now sir uh, my provisional diagnosis is obstructive jaundice mostly due to a uh, malignant etiology my first differential would be a carcinoma head of the pancreas uh, the periampullary malignancy a cholangiocarcinoma or a carcinoma gallbladder i would like to no, first no, hang, on, hang on hang on hang on carcinoma head of pancreas is different from periampullary uh, sir periampullary malignancy involves the head of pancreas up to 2 cm so i mean beyond that okay okay but generally we take head of pancreas as very apparent okay yes sir so what are the other other malignancies you see in periampullary malignancy other than head of pancreas so there would be uh, there can be head of pancreas firstly there might be distal common bile duct malignancy any duodenal malignancy might be there or malignancy of the ampulla of waiter sir so what is the distal uh cbd uh, uh, malignancy called cholangio that would be uh, you you yes 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 right okay so now how will you go about what is your sir, plan now sir firstly uh, i would like to uh see the liver function test for the patient to uh then i would like to go for usg abdomen pelvis for the gall bladder and the pancreas uh, pancreatic status so the liver function test of this patient sir are uh, total bilirubin is 27 no, no, uh, why do you want just why do you want to just a liver function test and then ultrasound sir i'm uh, suspecting a malignant uh, obstructive jaundice i would uh, you are right that you will do liver function and you see 26 uh, is it any it gives you any clue the... sir uh, direct bilirubin is uh, significantly raised that would uh, point towards obstructive jaundice sir also okay. alkaline phosphatase that you can liver function test and help you to say whether this what type of jaundice on this second yes, it help you to say that whether it is benign or malignant also. yes sir yes to some extent uh, but most of the time when there is a uh, bilirubin is more than 15 you will not think it up a benign cause as a first cause when it is going at higher level there is more in favor of the in case malignancy okay. yes sir and your alkaline phosphate is level also very high level that will can also help you so liver function test will give you a clue to do that yes sir but the controversy there which one you do first ultrasound or liver function test first sir uh, firstly i would like to go for ultrasound in this case So yeah. that is better to go as a physical examination, as an extended arm of the clinical examination. But if you do the ultrasound, then you can do. There is nothing wrong on that. Doing a liver function test, especially also the. Ten I mean, okay. quarters. Go ahead. What else you look for in the liver function? Is PT, INR, other things are important. CT, BT. Yes, sir. INR yeah. in this case would be important, sir, as the INR is a direct uh, indication of the synthetic function of the liver. Also, uh, due to cholestatic, uh, due to obstructive time. jaundice. Anek, anek. It is prothrombin time, not INR. Sorry, sir. It prothrombin time. Yeah. So the prothrombin time would be raised in uh, in this case. There would be obstructive jaundice, which would decrease the amount of bile in the uh, terminal ileum, thus disabling the fat absorption, which would decrease the absorption of vitamin K, which is essential for. Okay, okay uh, hang on. We didn't ask you so much. It's okay. Okay, you do that. What else? Is it the only that uh, this is a uh, direct liver function? Any other is only secreted by the liver, synthesized by the liver? Sir, other enzymes uh, would be alka. Uh, yes, uh, uh, aspartate transaminases and alanine transaminases. Our uh, transaminases are secreted by enzyme. the liver. Enzymes, sir. What, what about alkaline phosphatase? What about alkaline phosphatase? 
sir alkaline phosphatases are, are would be raised in case of obstructive jaundice sir okay so how do you know this alkaline phosphatases of liver origin or from bone in bone also alkaline phosphatases rises no yes is there is any mechanism to differentiate sample mentioned yeah you can do additional some tests it is called heat resistant okay yes heat labile and heat resistant okay yes sir okay the patient is in front of you right the patient is in front of you right go on albumin is only synthesized by liver you cannot give me so it also gives the value of the albumin is going to give you a lot of value because you are going to put it in the child's classification but treatment also going to depend upon that yes so they saw additionally you give but your examination point of view you have to talk about the confirmation of the diagnosis as the first possibility so it is better yes. put on the ultrasound as the first and uh, how you are going to do that confirmation okay so what will you look for in ultrasound sir in ultrasound i would uh, firstly look for the diameter of the common bile duct that's the yeah, first thing you look case. for no <clears throat> ultrasound sir, directly you see uh, cbd what else you see first thing give us the most important thing first so firstly i would look for uh, if any free fluid is present in the abdomen or not would you look for any any tissue you are palpating something what was your uh, clinical examination finding most important clinical examination finding gall bladder was palpable yeah you see that there would yes sir distended gall bladder to rule out any uh, yes sir uh, gall bladder malignancy and also Secondly, you would like to have a look at the pancreas no you would like to have evaluate the gall bladder you would like to evaluate the pancreas okay. you would like to evaluate the bile ducts you would like to evaluate the intrahepatic biliary radicals isn't it yes. all these things should come in order isn't it you made a diagnosis anatomical diagnosis there of the lump is gall bladder first you are radiologically also confirm that it is ultrasonically it is gallbladder then you go like that isn't it then have a look at the gallbladder the bile duct the diameter the dilatation of intrahepatic radicals hmm? okay yes, those are the important finding that you would like to pick up in the ultrasound correct yes sir okay go ahead go ahead sh yes, do you know how how do radiology start doing ultrasonography where where does he begin for any abdominal ultrasonography irrespective of the diagnosis known or not it begins with usually liver the liver right then Sorry. the comparison starts so at liver first of first thing you will look in obstructive jaundice will be which will be the evident dilated intrahepatic yes liver. then you go further for hepatic duct gallbladder common bile duct then further may not be will it because of yes yes then free fluids metastasis nodes etc yes sir what ultrasound you will use sir i didn't get the question no ultrasound means what type of ultrasound you are going to use sir firstly i would what uh, frequency wavelength you are going to use sir i don't know sir what is the normal frequency of the ultrasound used you know okay you will use the 5 megahertz ultrasound hmm? so abdominal megahertz you use any other special ultrasounds you know sir uh, high frequency can be used for uh, doppler no, i am asking you yeah. for this you are going to use only abdominal 5 megahertz you are going to use special yes, forms of ultrasounds sir so, uh, they can we can go for endoscopic ultrasonography endo ultrasonography can be done any the recent advances in the ultrasound can you use a contrast ultrasound sir i am not okay, okay now contrast enhanced ultrasound where the contrast is micro bubbles can be used and that will be used or ultrasound elastase you can have the fibrosis or the fibro scan Elastic. can be done so all these are different forms of the ultrasound which is used now in our hepatic and you do yes. you know what is the frequency of the probe like doing the truss or tvs or breast ultrasound or rr ultrasound no sir okay 
I will tell you, abdominal ultrasound is 3.5 to 5 megahertz. Okay. Yes, sir. Trust and the TVS is 7.5 megahertz. When you yes, do the sir. breast ultrasound or you do the thyroid ultrasound, it is around 10 megahertz to so 10 to 12 megahertz. When you go for the endo ultrasound, it is around 15 megahertz. Okay. Or when you are doing the intraoperative ultrasound, it is around 10 megahertz. Okay. So basic is that higher the frequency is there, lesser is the that penetration, is but better is the resolution there. Yes. Sir. Okay. So that is the basic concept which is there. So for superficial organs, yeah. higher, we frequency. Go for higher frequency. Higher frequency is used here. Okay. Yes, sir. So it is almost reverse to the light waves. If you have the wavelength, the higher the wavelength, lesser the penetration. Yes. The lesser yes. the wavelength, higher the penetration. Higher the sound the is in there reversely. The higher the frequency, yes. the lesser the. Nowadays, the endo sound, the endo ultrasound is being used routinely because most of the institutes they have this now. What are the advantages of endo ultrasound? So, firstly, US. Uh, US. Sir, uh, firstly, in cases of small lesions, it might be better use, visualized using an endo ultrasonography. Secondly, we will be able to take and uh, biopsy to confirm the diagnosis in these cases. Uh, using apart from, the, apart from the nodes that be delineated better, what about the vasculature? Yes, sir. Vas uh, uh, but involvement of the yes, sir. Superimmunocentric, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Be, uh, okay, these are the few important you know advantages of EUS, isn't it? Or yes, would sir. you like to do an ultrasound, I mean endoscopy in this patient? Endoscopy, sir. Uh, I would not like to do an endoscopy in this patient. No, by supposing if it's a periampillary carcinoma, yes, sir. Will it help you, sir? Uh, in this case, I can go for uh, common bile duct stenting to relieve the jaundice in this patient. But how will you do that? You have to diagnose that there is a role for endoscopy, isn't it? At least the yes, side beam scope, you may supposing suddenly you might be able to see the periampillary growth there. The advantage is the same sitting, you know, if you can take a biopsy and almost strength the lesion if you all if you have decided, depending on yes, the bilirubin sir. level, isn't it? Yes. There sir. is a definite role for endoscopy. All these patients will be subjected for upper jaw endoscopy. Sometimes we do an upper jaw endoscopy, and yeah, sometimes we go ahead and do it. If you're suspecting a periampillary, endoscopic evaluation is necessary. It's a must, isn't it? All these patients are usually subjected for. Endoscopy. endoscopy. Yes, sir. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Anik, you have admitted this patient, right? Yes, sir. Now, how will you what how how will you manage this patient? What are the priorities in managing this patient till you you go in for surgery? How will you optimize yes. this patient? I would like to first of all um, make sure that the patient's nutritional buildup is adequate. Uh, how will patient, you do that? So the uh, in this case the patient's hemoglobin is twelve, which is uh, which is good. Secondly, serum albumin of the patient, I would like to optimize before surgery. It's normal, isn't it? Uh, sir, albumin, yes, sir. Uh, 2.7. Uh, less, less than, slightly less than normal. Okay, yeah, normal. Total protein. I would like to optimize the INR of this patient. Vitamin K supplementation, uh, okay. I would like to give in this case. What else? Sir, uh, uh, prior to surgery, I would also uh, start the patient on uh, high protein as well as high glucose diet. Why would you do that? Sir, uh, and how will you do that? Sir, uh, the patient is taking orally. So firstly, I would like to start orally uh, a high protein glucose diet. Secondly, I would like to keep the patient hydrated in this case using uh, uh, using dextrose as well as uh, DNS, sir. IV fluids, I would like to give. Is uh, why not? Why not normal slime? Why do you want to give dextrose or or DNS? Sir, I would like to. Uh, okay, what happens? What happens if you just give five percent in this patient? What happens? What is five percent? It's just glucose and water. Yes, sir. The glucose is utilized. What, what are you left with? Just plain water. Just plain water. What will happen to it to the patient then? 
so there would be uh, it would decrease the osmolality of the uh, blood hypoosmolar it would have. so there will be more edema yes right? sir more edema as well as clearing so yes sir i would like also start uh, normal saline and drink as lactate in this you just treatment. why are you saying just say you'll hydrate the patient so that hydrate urine the output is is minimum yes uh, urine output in this patient uh, how much do you want urine output per minute do you want sir i would uh, i would like more than uh, 2 2000 ml of urine sir daily per at minute, least more how much per how much per minute What is what is normally normal urine output per minute? Normally, sir, more uh, one to two ml per kg per. It is one ml. One ml. So we'll take it at one point five, at least one point five ml. What else will yes. he do now? Sir, you've given vitamin K. You've uh, done improved his nutrition. You've improved his his hydration. What else? Sir, uh, I would also like uh, to go for ERCP with stenting for this. Before that, any role for for control of uh, of infections? Any role of antibiotics here? What type of infection we expect here? Any closed space infection is there? Any space is closed? There might be cholangitis due to biliary stasis, sir. So. antibiotics right antibiotic and anything yes, for itching the patient is not being able to sleep isn't it yes sir so how will you decrease his itching sir uh, i would like to give antihistaminics for what antihistaminic do you give and does it help what antihistaminic antihistaminic do you give what is the first what is the first line drug initial drug to give in a patient of for obstructive uh, itching in soj Is it antihistamines? I don't know. Sir. You give or so the uh, oxycholic acid, UDCA. Okay. Yes, sir. Then. Then what is the next one? That doesn't work. What can you add? Cholesteramine. That's the first line. Second line is rifampicin. Then the others like set setraline and all that kind of thing. So these are the three. You give uh, 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 UDCA. You give cholesteramine, and then finally give rifampicin. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. This these are the drugs which is used for intractable itching. This is an important part, isn't it? Though it is subjective. Probably you yes, know sir. most of this patient the severity completely start itching. This develops the scratches. So the best thing is to relieve this uh, itching. You know, these drugs are usually started. What it? else will you do for itching? The skin is dry. Yes, sir. I would like to uh, topical so, ointment. Yeah, give him I some emollient it. to make the skin yes, skin moist. Right. Okay. Okay, you've done that. Now, how how will you proceed? Any role of CT scan? Uh, yes, sir. I would like to go for CEC uh, contrast enhanced CT scan in this patient, sir. With a pancreatic protocol, sir. Minimum three mm. Uh, okay, trust. what is pancreatic protocol? Sir, in pancreatic protocol, minimum uh, slices are taken at three. No, no, hang on. We're not talking slices. Sir, there what are. What are the contrasts you would use here? Sir, firstly, non-contrast is done. Uh, followed so what, by an, what is what is uh, a neutral contrast sir uh, before injection of the uh, dye see uh, ct scan is done to uh, no in the giving some contrast which is called neutral contrast uh, sir neutral contrast is given in the form of water right i think in water yes sir okay water right yes sir and then to delineate the duodenum okay Now, what is pancreatic protocol, sir? Uh, CT scan is uh, done at three points. Sir, firstly, a non-contrast CT scan is done. To uh, secondly, CT scan is done at the arterial phase, approximately thirty seconds uh, after injection of dye, and uh, after that, in the, at the portal phase, 
सेवेंटी सेकेंड्स आफ्टर इंजेक्शन ऑफ डाइट एंड सी एफ फ्री या फ्री आर्टीरियल आर्टीरियल एंड पोर्टल ऑफ पोस्ट वेनस यस तो प्लीज After CT, what will you do? Sir, after uh, CT scan, I would like to uh, for I would like to go for uh, uh, to optimize the patient and uh, know about if the if the tumor is resectable or not on the basis of CT scan, sir. Yeah, that you have to assess whether the patient is it is operable or not operable. Is it there is difference between how operable? How will you say it is operable on CT scan? Sir, uh, on CT scan, I would like to know about the invasion of the surrounding vessels. Yes, which In vessels? Of, uh, the firstly, I would look for portal vein. If the portal vein is involved less than one hundred and eighty degrees, uh, that would account. That would be a resectable tumor. Sir. Okay. then there is a a borderline resectable category which involves more than 180 degree involvement of the portal vein or the superior mesenteric vein sir less than 180 degree of the superior mesenteric artery is also borderline resectable so and uh, these no, three things between the superior mesenteric vein superior yes, mesenteric artery and the portal vein which yes, one sir. will make it that it is a non resectable tumor or a non operable tumor Sir, more than one eighty degree involvement of the superior mesenteric artery, yes, or superior uh, mesenteric uh, artery is the most important one. Okay, if that is involved, then probably you cannot go ahead with the resection. Resection. Okay. What other things you want to see on the CT scan to say it is a resectable tumor or not? Sir, I would also like to uh, know if the tumor is extending up to the celiac axis or not. Yes. That would also, sir. then a uh, lymph nodal metastasis yes secondly uh, metastasis in the liver yes sir uh, and if uh, so which so metastasis will make it it is a non operable tumor sir the lymph nodes will say it is in a, it is not operable on no sir the retroperitoneal lymph nodes we uh, we can operate yes but so which metastasis, metastasis it will say on the ct scan that this is not an operable tumor sir firstly uh, to the liver or to the uh, peritoneum sir with the peritoneum cd metastasis no liver can also be resected okay there is a single metastasis that can be resected or it is localized to one lobe is there that can also be resected yes but once there is a peritoneal metastasis is there then you say probably it is not resectable Yes, sir. Can you do something for the peritoneal metastasis also, sir? Not in this type of the tumor, but other tumors where there is peritoneal metastasis there. Can you do something? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, we can. Uh, we can go for uh, high pack therapy. Yes, high pack. Yes. Yeah. What is high pack? You are right. Oh, you are right. You are correct. What is high pack, sir? What do they do there, sir? Uh, in high pack therapy, they inject uh, chemotherapeutic agents at a higher temperature and hyperthermic, you know? Hyperthermic, hyperthermic, intraperitoneal, intraperitoneal chemotherapy. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right. And what is high pack? I don't know. Pressurized intraperitoneal aerosol chemotherapy. Yes, doctor. What is the role of uh, laparoscopy in this patient, sir? Uh, laparoscopy can be done in this case uh, to know about the resectability of the tumor. If the peritoneal metastases are present, then we can abandon the procedure. Yes, you are right. So Probably. So what is it? Resectability or inoperability? So, what is the difference between resectable tumor and inoperable tumor? Sir, if the if the primary tumor is uh, not involving any local vein uh, vasculature, we can resect the tumor. But the if the metastasis is present, then it would be inoperable. We cannot uh, remove the 
both are both are not synonymous both are not synonymous yes, so in yes, this case as sir was asking laparoscopy will uh, help to differentiate whether it is inoperable or an operable tumor not a resectable or unresectable tumor so yes, what sir. type of things you can see in a laparoscopy but cannot be seen by ct scan which would have been missed by ct scan sir peritoneal seedlings could have been missed in case so in ct scan anything else so most of the time uh, when you do a laparoscopy what do you do you visualize then do you do any other procedure you do a peritoneal wash fluid for cytology okay so if the that cytology can be done immediately and it will give a result so if the malignant cells are positive you can deem it yes, as sir. a m1 disease so this is done in most of the intra abdominal tumors ca stomach ca uh pancreas or ca gall bladder everywhere so you have to irrigate with the saline and take the cytology and send it along okay. with heparin solution and send it for cytology and you will get the result in another 5 to 10 minutes so that's yes. the thing so yeah, in that's... case of uh, ct scan the inoperability or uh, unresectable tumor portal vein supramesentric vein supramesentric artery which is an absolute contraindication so more than 180 degrees in superior mesenteric artery why what is the reason even so, yeah. even an artery also you can reconstruct no even aorta you can reconstruct but uh, if the, it is more than 180 degrees then uh, repair uh, it uh, repair no, of the superior cut no no even if it is a 360 degree also you can cut the segment and uh, you can use a dacron uh, interposition graft because you can reconstruct an aorta in an abdominal aortic aneurysm yes i don't know sir so the reason is there will be perineural spread so as you see the lymphatics are going along with the veins nerves goes along with the arteries so so this tumor this pancreatic tumor or most of the retroperitoneal tumor are they spread perineurally so neural spread is also there so if you yes, even sir. if you do a re resection and reconstruction there will be a distal spread so patient will come with recurrence so that's why the supramesenteric artery invasion is an absolute contraindication for reconstruction or resection yes anik now city us everything laparoscopy shows that everything is resectable what else will you like to know from your radiologist before operating anything which will help you in operative steps extra suppose there it is absolutely small mass everything is free from tumor laparoscopy is also done what extra things you will like to know from your radiologist before going in for uh, vipuls procedure something with vasculature yes sir i would like to know if uh, uh, there might be uh, aberrant right hepatic artery yes What are the abnormalities you can have in hepatic arteries, sir? The right aberrant hepatic artery might be originating from the superior mesenteric artery. That is one. Anything else? Whole hepatic artery can be arising from SMA, right? Yes. Sir. And the left hepatic artery may be arising from left gastric. Left gastric. So these are the anomalies or any other abnormalities which is not. Uh, uh the normal you will like to know right otherwise yes, what can happen sir uh, in this case on uh, we would be resecting the uh, mass so that would hamper the arterial supply of the liver yes, if yes it, yes like it uh, right in brent pet factory okay do we have any imaging report of this patient yes sir ultrasonography uh, sir it is suggestive of approximately 27 by 29 mm hypoechoic lesion in head of pancreas with internal vascularity averting the portal vein and there is loss of fat plane which cause and also causing abrupt cut off of uh, common bile duct with proximal dilatation of 21 mm the proximal biliary system is dilated and dilated central and peripheral intrahepatic biliary radicals are present the duct, pancreatic duct is normal in caliber sir sir and on uh, cct abdomen and pelvis there is an ill defined heterogeneous hypodense lesion in the pancreatic head and pancreatic or duodenal groove with a abrupt cut off of the distal common bile duct causing proximal dilatation of the common bile duct the cystic duct and the hepatic ducts 
gall bladder is over distended with mildly hyper uh, dense content and the lesion is averting the d2 segment of the duodenal wall approximately 2 by 2.3 by 2.1 cm the rest of pancreas is normal pancreatic duct appears normal in caliber and the portal vein splenic and superior mesenteric vessels show normal contrast enhancement what is curvoisius sign sir curvoisius curvoisius signs uh, is uh, suggest that a pal um, a palpable gallbladder would uh, most no, probably no, no, is is it sir is it sign or law which you are asking for curvoisius law sir curvoisius law yeah Yeah, gun. I, I don't know. Sir. You agree, right? He's he's asking for Kuwais's law. Law. Same one. You started. Will you started? Will you start now? It's a rule. Kuwais's rule. So it has some exceptions. Always rules have some exceptions. No? These are all you the clues for you. You started, will. What happens? What is the definition of a curvature? Start shoot in an obstructed jaundice or in a jaundiced patient. Continue. Anik, you are there or have you disappeared? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You you are right. You are right. Carry on. Don't worry. Sir, you started well. In cases of obstructive jaundice, if there is a palpable gallbladder, then uh, that would effect uh, rule out a benign etiology and point towards a malignant etiology. So actually, you should include the words. Painless jaundice with a palpable gallbladder is unlikely to be due to a gallstone. gallstone. Okay, those words are important. Unlikely. It is not rule out. It is unlikely. It's As sir unlikely. said, there are certain exceptions. So, what are the exceptions for curvaceous law? Sir, exception. Uh, there can be a double impacted stone at the. Uh, what is that? Stone at, impacted stone at the uh, neck of gallbladder and a distal common bile duct stone called lithiasis. It might present with a uh, distended gallbladder. Okay. What else? Uh, See, you are telling one exception in which benign condition with a palpable gallbladder. Now tell me malignant conditions without palpable gallbladder. Most commonly in, in case of gallbladder carcinoma. What is associated with gallbladder carcinoma most commonly? Uh, there might be chronic fibrosis of the stones. Stones. Right. Long-standing stones. So, what happens to the gallbladder then? So, the gallbladder would be would be contracted and fibrosis. So, it can be malignancy without. Yes, sir. Hey, since you are this, what are the other causes for a palpable gallbladder? Sir, uh, a pain brain condition. Yes, sir. A pain. So we'll close in, in five minutes, sir. It's uh, quarter past nine, so we'll close in five minutes. A painful palpable gallbladder uh, would uh, point towards a. I would suspect pyocil in the, in that case. Mucosil rather than mucosil empyema gallbladder. Yeah, mention all those other causes of a palpable gallbladder. One is it this case obstructive jaundice. All right, then other yes. causes. Sir, the other two conditions. Uh, uh, sir, in cases of pyocil or uh, mucosil, then uh, emphysematous gallbladder, as sir said. Okay, Anik, I'll just ask you one question. You said IHBR is dilated, not dilated? Dilated, sir. Okay, so when, when do you call What's the normal size of IHBR? So normally, uh, central uh, intrahepatic biliary radicals are normally uh, 1 to 2 millimeters. It's 4 millimeters. More than four millimeters dilated. Yes. So, what is double duct sign? So, a double duct sign uh, is there in the periampullary region. There is dilatation of the common bile duct as well as the pancreatic duct, which can be seen in uh, ultrasonography or EUS, ER, or uh, CECT abdomen pelvis as well. Any Two idea in which malignancy it was uh, described? Sir, uh, am ampulla of. Uh, was described in head of pancreas malignancy. Okay, so in this patient, you see a uh, growth in the region of head of pancreas in pancreatic group. There is dilatation of CBD and upstream, but there is no dilatation of MPD. So, what is this most likely to be? Sorry, uh, it can be uh, distal CBD. 
okay so in your differential diagnosis you kept a ca head of pancreas as first one so yes, only thing which worried me was it's a painless uh, progressive jaundice uh, yes, usually carcinoma head of pancreas present with pain 70% only 30% present without a head of pancreas so still you can mention periampillary carcinoma as first one only thing which made you against periampillary carcinoma was like the uh, absence of waxing and waning yes uh, so waxing and waning happens in ampullary carcinoma not this cholangiocarcinoma okay only the ampulla yes. shrivels and goes off so that is only a part of periampillary carcinoma periampillary carcinoma can also be caused due to duodenal carcinoma it can be caused due to head of pancreas within 2 cm yeah, or 1 exactly. cm okay oh. yes so yes. this is most likely to be uh, due to a distal cholangiocarcinoma and uh, i wish that comes as first dd second could be uh, carcinoma head of pancreas okay Yes. Probably, I, th- I don't think he's right when you have the fourth diagnosis of carcinoma. You don't have to give so many different, so many different answers. answers. I think two should suffice. If at all, I think what will be asked in detail is only carcinoma of the primary head of the pancreas or periampillary carcinoma. Mm-hmm. Don't keep theoretical. What you mentioned, all theoretical possibility. Yes. You can probably, if it is asked, you can discuss about cholangiocarcinoma. Don't entertain carcinoma gallbladder here. Anyway, out of interest, what is uh, reverse three sign? We don't the ask anymore. Yes, sir. In cases of ampullary malignancies, the duodenal mucosa forms a reverse three. Uh, mm-hmm. The duodenum on the the duodenum on the side of the pancreas forms a reverse three, which is seen in case of uh, in CECT abdominal pelvis. I think so. We'll have to call it because we are crossing the time. Santosh, one question to you, Santosh. Do all ampullary carcinoma as waxing and waning? Pardon, sir? Do all periampillary carcinoma has got vaccine? No, sir. That's what. Uh, periampillary carcinomas are four types. Like duodenal carcinoma, ampullary carcinomas, distal cholangiac carcinomas, and uh, head of pancreas carcinomas, which is within one or two centimeters within the radius of uh, the ampulla. So, only the ampullary carcinoma uh, shrivels off and produces vaccine and waning of jaundice. The duodenal uh, carcinoma, which is present close distal cholangia on the head of pancreas, doesn't shrivel. So, we don't uh, see uh, vaccine and waning in that. And, and even in ampullary, all may not present with vexing veining. Yes, sir. Is there any size so that it gets slubs up? Or your... No, sir. That uh, changes from person to person. Basically, it outgrows the blood supply and it uh, undergoes necrosis and shrivels off. They usually take it as 2 centimeters when the blood supply is... Okay, uh, sir. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. sir can we go to Anik? The Anik? Uh... Well done, Anik. Well done. Excellent. Excellent, Anik. Nice presentation, sir. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Do you have any questions, Anik, to ask Professor Ajay Khanna, sir? Ajay Khanna, sir, you will give closing comments. Can I will, no. sir, can we go to the next case? Just yes, not there. We can. Very good presentation, Anik. Congrats. Thank, Thank you, sir. Professor Srinivasan, could you call the next slide? Right? Please to get right. clarified. Nicely presented. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Dr. Anik Rati, do you have any questions to ask the faculty doubts to clarify? Tense and he was very composed. <laughs> okay. We drilled him, sir. You drilled him. Actually, he, he tackled nice pieces. Yes, sir. Well done. For, 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 for a post slide, to answer. Well that's very good slide. You are very confident. Look, very confident. Good luck, Dr. Rati. Thank you. Only thing, only thing, differential diagnosis should have been little. Less all uh, narrowed down. Yes, sir. And this was this, this, yes. Otherwise, good. Very good. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Dr. Anik. Uh, now we move yeah. on to the next case. Dr. Kavya, are you with us? Yes, sir. Yes, okay, sir. Ma'am, please introduce yourself, your department yes. uh, faculty, and then start your presentation. Okay, sir. Good evening, everyone. Good luck to you. Ma'am. Able, sir? Please start now. You are going good. Yes, sir. I am Dr. Kavya, a fine year MS General Surgery postgraduate from Coimbatore Medical College. My HOD is Dr. Lakshmi Narayani, madam. My chief, Dr. Ravi, sir, and my guide, Dr. Srinivasan, sir. And my assistant professors are Dr. Radhika, ma'am, and Dr. Kartika, sir. I am going to present a case of ulceroproliferative growth over the face. Chief compliance. 
a 52 year 52 year old female patient hailing from kandasami palayam e road who is a homemaker presented to our opd with chief complaints of ulcerative proliferative growth in the right nasolabial fold since one year history of presenting illness patient was apparently normal one year back when she noticed a nodule in her right nasolabial fold for which she went to a private practitioner where she had undergone nodular excision following which she was referred to a tertiary care center but she was a treatment defaulter and then she again developed a nodular lesion in the right nasolabial fold after two months which ruptured into an ulcer which was initially small in size gradually progressed to present size almost three times the initial size to involve right upper lip and right nostril not associated with pain history of episodic bleeding present from the ulcer no history of loss of sensation no history of itching no history of difficulty in breathing no history of tremors no history of trauma no history of prolonged sun exposure no history of radiation exposure no history of any previous chronic scar no history of any other ulcer or swelling in the face or neck no history of breathlessness hemoptysis no history of headache seizures no history of jaundice abdominal pain no history of fever no history of loss of weight and appetite coming to past history she is a known case of diabetes mellitus but not on treatment not a known case of hypertension bronchial asthma tuberculosis or epilepsy she has history of nodular excision in the right nasolabial fold one year back no history of drug allergies coming to personal history she consumes mixed diet her sleep is undisturbed her appetite is normal bowel and bladder are regular non smoker and non alcoholic she has history of betel nut chewing since 15 years menstrual and obstetric history uh, she had regular 28 day cycle flow lasting 3 to 4 days attained okay. menopause 15 years back uh, prior to leaving to both by full term normal delivery so coming to summary of the summary of this case based on history a 52 year old female patient presented with chief complaints of ulcerative proliferative growth in the right upper lip sorry right nasolabial fold since one year for which she had undergone excision after two months again developed a nodule which ruptured into an ulcer gradually increased in size not associated with pain with history of episodic bleeding and blackish discoloration of ulcer edges with no ulcer or swelling elsewhere in the body sir so should i proceed with examination or you wait you observe probably what is your probable diagnosis or the faculty can take over ave what is nodular excision sir the uh, just go to the go to the first slide yes sir sir patient ha pa pa one year back patient noticed a nodule in her right nasolabial fold sir for which she had undergone excision of the nodule in the private setup no records of the surgery available sir the patient no, any term like nodular excision no you have mentioned again and again about the nodular excision the recurrent growth sir so i mentioned it that way sir So, the excision of the nodule, the not the nodule. Okay, it's not like a local excision or wide excision or radical excision. So there is okay. no term like a nodular excision, is it? Okay, sir. You just say it is excision of the nodule was done, you know, or excision of the swelling was done. Okay, sir. Right. So, what do you think sir. from all this history? That what is the problem? Sir, one one year back, she had a nodule in her uh, without a biopsy. or without a biopsy report she had undergone some excision yes. and following that patient was uh, referred to some tertiary care center sir so what do you we, think would be your diagnosis probable we, we, we the doctor has referred to the case sir what no why the doctor has you said there's no biopsy is taken and why the doctor referred to the hair center sir we, after excision the biopsy report was <laughs> Sir, can you hear me, sir? Biopsy is done. The doctor must have known the biopsy report. That is why he is sending that yes, patient to the pre-operatively biopsy was not was not there, sir. Wide local excision was done. That report was basal cell carcinoma, and after that, patient doctor had referred her for tertiary care center. Okay. Patient was be default. careful in saying the word. No surgeon will do a wide local excision without knowing what is the diagnosis. Okay, sir. If you say excision, it is fine. When you are using the word wide local excision, there must be some suspicion or some. I mean, no, he must have known that. Okay. Do you okay. think that uh, basal cell carcinoma will such a fa fastly spread within two months? You will get another uh, nodule. 
what is the growth pattern of basal cell carcinoma it's a slow, very slow growing tumor sir so so you are case saying that within two months one one year within two months such an extensive growth is there is, sir, it, is it give any any clue or any clue the type of the basal cell carcinoma you are expecting it might it would have been an infiltrative type sir basal cell carcinoma probably the margins would have would have not been completely resected while resecting the first session uh, primary lesion you you said it is a nodular type yes sir basal cell carcinoma you know is a nodular <laughs> type suddenly you are saying it could be the possibility of infiltrating you know so there is something is missing in the history because one year time within two months another big sir then such a loss total loss of the upper lip Yes, sir. Something more would have been uh, there in the history. Okay. She was not able to see that. She said two it, years ago she had some nodule-like thing. Your monomer in the head took tanga of dinda sonang sir. Then she said so after that it started growing, and he is telling one year only that sir. But she is telling two years almost just it has recurred immediately. But she is telling this big it has come for two year one year sir. It's almost for two years it is there. What are the different sir, types of basal cell carcinomas? Madhu sir, you are muted, sir. Nodular, not nodular ulcerative type, sir. Nodular cystic variant, sir. Morphia, morphia, morphia variant, and superficial variant, sir. What is the rodent ulcer? Another name for basal cell carcinomas. So, what is the difference between a rodent ulcer and a general type of basal cell carcinoma? Rodent ulcer, it's locally invasive, sir. Uh, it has more vertical growth than radial growth pattern, so it destroys the tissues locally, and there will be less chances of metastasis to other places, sir. Yeah, it burrows like a rodent, isn't? It? Yes, sir. So it yes, will sir. burrow. So even if the patient may have a very advanced growth, but it will be still localized. Yes, sir. Right. What are the special characteristic features of the basal cell carcinoma? Uh, Where is it most common in the face? Uh, above the Ongren's line, sir. The line joining the ear lobe and angle of mouth, sir. Upper part of the face, it is more common, sir. What is it otherwise called as? Is it called a locally malignant tumor? Locally invasive tumor, sir. Locally invasive. What are the special characteristic features compared to squamous cell carcinoma? Less chances of systemic metastasis, sir. And lymph yes. node. Why? Why less chances of lymph node metastasis? Sir, one theory is uh, the um, uh, lymphatic emboli are uh, so large that the lymphatic uh, the spreading through the lymphatics will be less, sir. So less chances of metastasis to lymph nodes, sir. Okay. Why it spreads very slow? The growth It, is very slow, no? What is? Yes, sir. What is the reason? it has only vertical growth sir so it buries down sir rather than spreading that there is must be the histology because the, it is a peripheral cell peripheral cell peripheral, the peripheral cells will yeah, multiply there is yes, no mitosis will be less yes sir what is basal cell carcinoma defined basal cell carcinoma sir it arises from basal cells in the epidermis what is the function of basal cell so here Situated. So, uh, sir, is asking. Really, what? Sir, I. And basal cell. Function of basal cell. Basal cell. It yeah, produces. You have different cells in there. No, each has a role. Produces keratin. What is the role basal cell is playing? It synthesizes keratin. Keratin. Not sure, sir. Sorry, sir. It synthesizes mainly mucin. Okay, sir. So that is the one reason why you say the retraction artifact in the in the when we say the biopsy report, the mucin will dry up. It will show you an artifact in there. Okay. So the main function is only the mucin secretion. So you are okay. going to get only. Okay. Sir. What is the non-melanoma skin arising from the epithelium, particularly the basal cell? Where else you can so get the, basal cell carcinoma? Exposure to the sunlight. What sir? What is the significance of that? Sir, uh, this patient. Uh, Significant just increased like exposure to UV radiation is one of the predisposing factors for basal cell carcinoma, sir. What is the latent period? Latent period, uh, almost ten to fifteen years, sir. 
more than that. It is 20 to 50 years. It is a not in the air. And your exposure to the lesser age group, less than one year, two years. So that is more significant than in an adult getting an exposure to that. Yes, sir. What are the other predisposing factors? Uh, immunosuppression, sir. Family history. What family history? Uh, Gorland syndrome, PTS, PTC, a gene mutation can be there, sir. So patient will have what multiple... What is the difference between this basal cell carcinoma and the basal cell carcinoma you expect in the Gorland syndrome? What, sir? So these, you are having a single basal cell carcinoma here. Yes, sir. And what type of basal cell carcinoma you are going to expect in the Gorlin syndrome? Superficial type, sir. Multiple. It is multiple. Multiple. So you get a, not a single one. Normally, you multiple. only have a multiple. Yes, sir. What are the other predisposing factors for the multiple basal cell carcinoma? Xeroderma pigmentosum, sir. No, okay. Xeroderma pigmentosum is not producing a multiple reason. There is no need. Yeah. Okay, sir. Arsenic is one of the, when you have an arsenic exposure, arsenic. that can also lead on to the multiple. Yes, sir. That is the Besak syndrome. You have uh, both this Garlin syndrome, Besak syndrome, and the arsenic are known to produce the multiple uh, basal cell lesions, not the single type of lesion. Yes, sir. What is the basal squamide uh, basal cell? Uh, squamous cell. What is the basal cell? can have the squamous Component is progression to the squamous, so that can also. You said morphia. What is that morphia? Yes. Sir, it will be uh, infiltrate, infiltrating the ill-defined uh, malignancy, sir, with poorly defined margins. Oh, what is the peculiarity of morphia type? Sir, what is the peculiarity of the morphia type? It is infiltrative type, but what is there more specifically there? It is called sclerosing type, so you'll get more of fibrosis. Yes, it, you know, never get fibrosis. Otherwise, that here there is you get a more of the fibrosis. fibrosis. Yes, sir. So, is there is any bleeding? You said there is an occasional bleeding. Yes, sir. Patient so the, uh, in the ulcer, ulcer area, sir. When she touches, patient has the bleeding feels. Ble ble uh, episodes of bleeding, sir. It's, it was bleeding or touch, sir. Okay. Was there any lymph node, palpable lymph nodes in this case? No, sir. No, okay. No, sir. So where what do the palpable nodes for this region? What, sir? Cannot where get the lymph nodes. Sorry, sir. Which region you palpate the lymph nodes? You examine the lymph nodes for this region. What is the draining area? Uh, sir, uh, in the submandibular region and the pre auricular area, parotid region, sir. And cervical region, sir. Okay. So there were no, no lymph nodes at all? Yes, sir. No lymph nodes, sir. Suppose in such cases of basal cell carcinoma, you see a lymph node. What does it indicate? Is it due to the metastasis or something else? It might have a dual component like probably with the squamous cell carcinoma also, sir, basal squamous variant. Anything else? With such a big ulcer, what happens? Close Infection, to the cavity. Infection, sir. Yeah, yeah. This infection. So, what is the artery which causes the bleed here? What artery? Superior labial artery. Which is a branch of? Facial artery, sir. Okay, good. Where else you can get basal cell carcinoma apart from this area? Uh, in the trunk region, sir. Anywhere in the limbs? Shoulders, trunk. This, this comes in a high risk group or looking at clinically, you say it's a high risk or low risk group? It's high risk group, sir. What do you say it's high risk? Sir, one is this is situated in one of the H regions of basal cell carcinoma, sir, which include periorbital region and a perioral region. And second thing, this is a recurrent tumor, sir. So it comes under a high risk, sir, clinically. And it's more than two centimeters, sir. So what is the what? significant of that? What do you say? When you say high risk group, what is the significant? High risk uh, excision margin should be increased, sir, because aggressive uh, recurrent tumors are more aggressive than the primary tumor. So, our uh, wide local excision is needed, sir. And defect will be large, so flaps need to be priced sir, for closing. So, so you what look that? for any other for that uh, cancer? What is field cancerization? 
uh, other than the local part, multiple uh, other other sites can be involved uh, with malignancy. Any past surgery is a predisposing factor for uh, skin malignancy. Sir, major and such a chronic uh, scar due to previous. No, I'm not asking about skin cancer. Any any other surgery? I didn't get the question, sir. Sorry. Sir. Transplantation. If the patient Trans has a history of transplantation and they have yes. immunosuppressant, they yes, have sir. a ten times more heparin. So that the history must also ask for that. Whenever you are thinking of the skin cancer, not only this, any cancer. Okay, sir. But the seroderma pigmentosa. What is the peculiarity of that? Seroderma pigmentosa. It's more peculiarity. It's autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive? It's autosomal recessive, sir. Very good. It's autosomal. Most of among all this, this is an only autosomal recessive. It can produce all the three malignancies. Yes, not sir. only basal. It can produce melanoma. And squamous cell carcinoma. So how will you proceed with the clinical Exam examination? Yes, sir. Coming to general physical examination, she is a moderately built and nourished female patient who is conscious, oriented to time, place, and person, and afebri. Her pulse rate was 76 beats per minute, regular in rhythm, normal in character, and good volume. Her blood pressure is 120-70 millimeters, millimeters of mercury, recorded in right arm. Her respiratory rate is 16 cycles per minute. Her height is 150 centimeters, weight is 55 kg. Her BMI was 24.4 kilograms per meter square. No pallor, ictress, cyanosis, clubbing, generalized lymphadenopathy, or pedal edema. Her head to toe examination was normal. This is the lesion. Coming to local examination, inspection, patient in sitting position in a well lit room after getting consent under adequate light, patient's face examined from front to side. An ulcerative proliferative growth of size 6 into 3 cm is seen over the right side of upper lip and nasolabial fold. Extends laterally till right side angle of mouth, superiorly extending into right nostril, right nasolabial fold, medially till 1 cm to the left of midline over the right lip. Uh, 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 there was raised, bearded and rolled out edges, irregular margins, few dilated blood vessels seen over the floor, no discharge seen. No, uh, no other similar ulcer seen. No obvious swelling seen in the neck. Head and neck region. Palpation. No warmth. Non-tender. An ulcerative proliferative growth of size. 6 into 3 centimeters is palpated over the right side of the upper lip and right nasolabial fold, destroying it, um, destroying the right upper half of the lip. Extends laterally till right angle of the mouth, superiorly extending into right nostril, right nasolabial fold, medially till 1 centimeter to the left of midline over the right lip. Can you right. just explain how to examine the warmth? Uh, with the uh, dorsum of the fingers, sir. On the ulcer? Yes, sir. On the ulcer is surrounding the, the ulcer. Hmm? No, this is a basic. Ma. You are presenting a case of ulcer and we are going to say it is a warmth. Sorry, sir. We corrected, sir. Please don't make this mistake. Huh? Yes, you can say the surrounding of the so that is also not important because your entire lesion is a large ulcerative proliferative lesion you are going to present. Now, yes, putting sir. the first sentence in the palpation as a no warm, no tenderness as a routine. Sorry, be sir. careful when you are doing yes, an sir. ulcer. Hmm? Yes, well corrected, sir. Sorry, sir. Oh, go ahead. Yes, sir. Raised, beaded, and rolled out edges were present. Hard and irregular margins with surrounding induration present. Few dilated blood vessels and mixed uh, mixed pale and red granulation tissue seen over the floor. Base is formed by right gingival region and facial muscles. Bleeding on touch. Ulcer is immobile. No other swellings palpated in neck or face. Other systemic examination, cardiovascular system, uh, S1, S2 heard, no murmurs heard, respiratory system, bilateral arrangement present, no added sounds, parabdomen soft, non-tender, no organomegaly, central nervous system, no focal neurological deficit, spine and cranium was normal. So somebody, a 52-year-old female patient presented with chief complaints of ulcerative proliferative growth in right nasolabial fold since one year, for which she had undergone excision of the nodule. After two, two months, again developed a nodule in the same place, which ruptured into an ulcer, gradually progressed to present size, associ not associated with pain, with history of episodic bleeding and blackish discoloration of ulcer edges, with no ulcer or swelling elsewhere in the body. On examination, an ulcerative proliferative growth of size 16 to 3 centimeters is palpated over the right upper right side of upper lip and nasolabial fold, destroying it, raised, beaded, and rolled out edges present, hard, irregular margins with surrounding induration, 
present with few dilated blood vessels seen over the floor. Base is formed by right upper gingival region and facial muscles, bleeding on touch, immobile with no cervical impedinopathy. So, so can you show the ulcer? Uh... Yes, sir. What, where do you see the base is formed with the facial muscle? Sir, in the nasolabial uh, fold region, sir. In the upper superior portion of the ulcer, sir. This is a through and through ulcer. The rest, uh, the entire tissue has lost. So, where sir, do you feel the base here? Sir, over the. the is destroying a whole of the upper lip. Yes, sir. Now, why do you want to commit by saying facial muscle? No need, no? Yes, sir. Yeah, then why do you want exactly in it black and white? The picture is right in front of you. Just describe what is what you're seeing there, isn't it? Okay, sir. Don't necessarily get dragged into a lot of controversies and you know, this is how you people get into trouble. Okay, isn't sir. It? There is yes, no sir. need to describe that, okay? Okay, sir. Sorry, sir. Well corrected. Okay. 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 Rolled out like this. Yes, sir. Raised and rolled out. Sir, sorry, sir. The edges you have mentioned as a raised and rolled out. Yes, sir. Where you are seeing the rolled out? Sir, this nodular appearance. Hmm. Rolled out means what? Epithelial cells, the growing cells will fall one over the other. It will give rise to rolled out appearance. It will overhang the margin. Here, almost it is the margin and uh, it is on the edge you are seeing. Rolled out is more in favor of a squamous cell carcinoma. Okay, sir. The raised and beaded edge is for the basal cell and typically it is, looks like a raised because the margin and this is almost looking the same. Yes, sir. It's not, it is not like a cauliflower, it is not spreading out. Yes, sir. So, typically when you are thinking it is a very good I mean, uh, uh, basal cell carcinoma, Better, unless you are having, obviously seeing your rolled out, don't use the word rolled out. Okay, sir. Better raised and beaded. Yes, sir. In this slide, bro. Yes, sir. So, what is your diagnosis? Kavya, Kavya, sorry. Can you tell what is a, as the... why can't this, Kavya, why can't this be a tubercular ulcer? What is a Buruli's ulcer? Buruli's ulcer is... Sir, I don't remember, sir. Sorry, sir. It's tubercular ulcers on the face. It's kind of seen in, in Africa and this kind of region. Okay, sir. Yes, sir. And it can lead to... It can bore into the bones and it can be... There, there are so many... I mean, just can't come to a diagnosis of basal cell carcinoma. Okay, sir. Even, even uh, mono... In a, Epstein Bauer viruses can cause this kind of destruction of the face. Yes, sir. Right. Can you tell the anatomy of the you upper lip? You are lip? expected to see the commonest thing here. Because it's not a differential diagnosis, a rare discussion you can bring in. But okay, uh, obviously, at this region, because right. you have the history of the nodular lesion started right. and it is recurrent. But tuberculosis crosses should be kept as uh, differential here. Differential. Okay, sir. So, how are you just proceed? asking, what is the anatomy of the upper lip? Can you tell? Anatomy of the upper lip. Yes. What are the various parts of the upper lip? Sir, vermilion. Yes. Uh, central. Can you just show the picture of this patient? Sir. Just show the picture. Now tell what are the things which has gone in the upper lip in this patient. The filtrum is lost, sir. Yes, one is the filtrum is lost. Yes, sir. What and else uh, has been lost? Right side, uh, right upper lip and right nasolabial fold is gone, sir. No, lip. First tell about the lip. Yes, sir. What right up. to the columella here? You know what is columella? Lateral portion of uh, lip, sir. No, columella. Nose. Yeah, junction of the lip and the nose, which is there. Yes, okay. 
Yes, sir. So here it is getting infiltrated because of or lost. Yes. Yes, it's infiltrating inside. Then both the filter ridges are lost. Yes, sir. Filtrum is lost. Yes, sir. Right sided, but mineral border is lost. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So all those things are lost in the upper lip. Area. So those are the various parts of the upper lip. Area. Yes, sir. And what about the nose? What are the things which are there involved in the nose? Inferior floor of the nose, right nostril is lost, sir. Yes. What about the aloe of the nose? Aloe of the nose are also uh, infiltrated with clothes, sir. Right, right side, side. No? right yes, side sir. it is involved. Yes, sir. So, in fact, you have to describe in those terms because ultimately when you are going to do a reconstruction, yes, sir. then all these things has to be repaired. Yes, sir. Okay, so from that point of view, it is important to know that what are the various things which has gone in this ulcer when you are going for the wide axis. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, so, so with uh, such yeah. a big ulcer, uh, doctor, uh, the... Oral commissure cannot be closed at all. Yes, sir. Right? So, you have not mentioned anything about uh, the eating habits, whether uh, the patient was able to eat or drink, how is the articulation, how is the speech and all. Her speech is, uh, pronunciation is, uh, has altered significantly, sir. Whatever she is speaking, she is not able to speak properly. But otherwise, her eating habits, everything are normal, sir. Do you think drinking is possible with this one? Patient with, uh, Sir, but not possible, sir. Actually, it's not possible, right? Sir, because the commissure is gone. The commissure is very important yes, thing in a lip architecture. So once the commissure is gone, even an angle deviation of mouth in facial palsy, yes, sir. Any pleasure will have dribbling. Salivary dribbling will be there. So yes, you mentioned about excess salivation because the saliva can uh, erode or digest the base and cause further bleeding. So these yes, are all the important things which you have to mention in the history. Okay, sir. So, uh, you mentioned about the induration. So, how far the induration is felt from the edge of the ulcer? That is very important because the resection is going to be based on the induration margin only and not on the margin of the ulcer. Yes, sir. So, how uh, far it is extending? Immediately below the edges, the induration was felt, sir. Around uh, one centimeter from the angle of the mouth, sir. So, why is this induration is seen? Why it is felt? It's infiltrating... Right. So, if an, if an ulcer is an indurated ulcer, what does that mean? Most probably, it's a squamous cell carcinoma usually will have induration, sir. No, any, any malignancy, any malignant ulcer or a long-standing ulcer can have induration. Okay, sir. So, that's the reason. So, <clears throat> so what else you want to see clinically? Because uh, when you are telling that, the patient is having some amount of uh, involvement of the upper jar, right? Yes, sir. So, you have to mention about the opening of the mouth, whether she is able to open the mouth. So what does it call the inability to open the mouth? What, what is it called as? Trismus, sir. So was there any trismus here? No, sir. Will, will this ulcer can cause trismus? This can cause, sir, if it infiltrates the heart palate. Heart palate? No, no. Not how does it, how, how does uh, trismus happen? In a oral ulcer or a oral cavity lesion, how does a trismus happen? Fibrosis of the muscles, intraoral muscles, buccal. Muscles. It's not fibrosis, it's infiltration. 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 Intraoral. Can you can you tell some intraoral muscles you know of? Buccinators. Is it intraoral or extraoral? Extraoral. So there is nothing called intraoral muscle or extraoral muscle. So muscles of mastication and muscles of facial expression. Yes, sir. So, muscles of facial expression are those in the subcutaneous plane which are supplied with the facial nerve. Yes, sir. So, buccinator infiltration can cause a little bit of trismus, but the most important cause of trismus is caused by the infiltration of the muscles of the mastication. Okay, sir. Can you tell me the muscles of mastication? Pterygoids, sir. What are, how many pterygoids? Superior, Nickel inferior, and middle, lateral. lateral. And what else? Any other in the temporal region? Temporalis Yeah, temporalis so muscle. What are the muscles of mastication that you know? <clears throat> Any other muscle here? Close to the parotid region? 
Starts with M. Starts with M. Masseter. Masseter, sir. Yes, yeah, sir. have you heard heard of the muscle yes, masseter? Yeah. Yes. So the main muscles are masseter, medial, lateral pterygoids, and temporalis. Yes, sir. So which is the elevator? Or yeah, there are two two actions, no elevation and depression, right? Yes, sir. For opening of the mouth. Yes, sir. So which joint the moment happens? Temporomandibular joints. Temporomandibular. So which muscle causes elevation? Which muscle causes depression? Temporalis causes elevation, sir. Hmm. And uh, depression is caused by pterygoid muscles, sir. Which pterygoid? Uh, medial pterygoids. Okay, actually three muscles cause elevation and only one muscles cause depression. Okay. Lateral pterygoid. Lateral pterygoid. <clears throat> so in, infiltration of the lateral pterygoid can cause... Lateral pterygoid and lateral pterygoid. Arising from where? What, sir? Medial pterygoid and lateral pterygoid are arising from which part? What is the origin? Pterygoid of temporal. Temporalis muscle comes from the temporal. Yes, sir. Sir, I don't remember. Both come from the lateral pterygoid. One is on the medial side, one is from the mm -hmm. lateral side. This is yes, not from the two different pterygoid. Same pterygoid, medial and lateral side it comes. Yes, sir. So, what is the nerve supply of all these muscles of mastication? Mand mandibular. Yeah, mandibular branch of? Trigeminal nerve, sir. Yes, very good. So, they are all the muscles of the first arch. Yes, sir. First arch muscles, okay. Yes, sir. So, here in this patient, you told that upper jaw forms the floor. Upper jaw forms the floor. Yes, sir. Right? So you, you, do you like to do any other clinical examination to assess how much the upper jaw is involved? So upper jaw is formed by what bone? Maxilla, sir. Maxilla. So maxilla yes. has, so how much maxilla is in, involved by this tumor? So you can see the maxilla anterior and lateral, right? Yes, sir. An inferior part by oral examination. How will you yes. assess the maxilla superior part and posterior part? Any clinical examination is there? I don't know, sir. Sorry, sir. You can do a post-nasal examination. Post-nasal okay. examination. How you examine the adenoids, no, in kids? Yes, sir. In adenoids, you assess the post-nasal examination. Like, similarly, you can assess the man, maxilla's posterior margin. Okay, sir. And also, another thing is, since maxilla is involved, so there is something called maxillary, uh, maxilla enters into the nasal cavity through some meatus. What is that called? The ostia of the maxilla enters into the... There are a lot of meatus, right? Superior yes. meatus, inferior, yes. middle meatus. So where does it open? Maxilla and the middle meatus, sir. Middle meatus. So how, will, how can you examine the middle meatus? Through a... Nasal examination. So in the in the local area examination, you have to mention about the nose. Okay, sir. No na nasal cavity. You mentioned about the philtrum and the uh, external nares alone, but you have not mentioned about how the lesion is there in the middle meatus. Okay, that yes, also has to be mentioned. Yes, sir. So. <clears throat> How do you want to... The symptom will be there when the maxilla is involved. Sir? Any area you can look for any anesthesia, hyperesthesia. Infraorbital region, sir. Hmm? Infraorbital region, sir. Good. Yeah. Okay. We will ask her to proceed with the diagnosis. How do you confirm the diagnosis, ma? Uh, sir, first we will do radiological investigation, sir. To look for the local in invasion of CT facial bones, sir. And uh, we'll do uh, uh, incision biopsy, sir, for this case. Do you need a CT at this point first? Sir, for in order to look for the infiltration into maxilla and nasal, the level of extent of uh, nasal involvement, sir. Hmm. Or you'll do the biopsy first. Which one, sir? 
Will you do the biopsy first or the radiological investigation first? First radiological investigation, sir, followed by biopsy. So the patient has already undergone surgery. Do you like to get the slides and blocks of the previous surgery? We can get, sir, but patient uh, proper details of the surgery or if nothing was available, sir, the patient. No, if at all, if they are available, you should ask first that yes, one sir. get them reviewed, isn't it? Before yes, you enter enter by a biopsy, isn't it? Yes, Only sir. in the absence of those details, yes, sir. Probably you can just go ahead and do a re biopsy. But yes. otherwise, if they're available, you can ask for a review. Huh? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. So even if the details are not available, the history itself will give you a lot of things. So yes, the sir. things you can ask is the whether how when was the surgery done and how many days after the surgery the tumor recurred was there any adjuvant treatment given or did the patient take any other alternative medicines or anything like that so everything yes, has to be asked yes sir okay then uh, how how do you proceed very very short time to must mean also ask for whether it is really healed or not sometimes it will continue that without healing itself it will go okay sir We'll proceed with the biopsy. So, from where will you take the incision biopsy? Which location? Superior, inferior, medial margin, or lateral margin? From where you want to take? Can you show the picture again? Yeah. Sir, from where? From, yeah, from, from lateral margin, sir, with the junction of normal skin. Yeah. Why? Why? Why you prefer that lateral margin? Sir, it's a proliferating area, so we'll get the central. More if central area is more prone for healing, sir, comparatively with the peripheral area. It's yeah, spreading. Not only that. Not only that, you have got vital structures when you are in the midline, and reconstruction will be difficult. Yes, sir. So lateral you can take. Yes, sir. So if there is a if there is a lesion in the lip, imagine a lesion in the lip. Okay, lower. Yes, sir. From where yes, you will take? From the middle or from the lateral lip? From the lateral area, sir. No, in lip lesions, always it is preferable to go in the middle because lip the most important structure is a commissure. You cannot reconstruct the commissure perfectly. Okay, but you can reconstruct the middle lesions. But in yes. this particular patient, the lip is already involving the commissure. So there is no point in preserving the commissure. You can directly go ahead and uh, do a uh, incision biopsy from the edge of the ulcer. Yes, sir. And it is preferably better that you include the indurated area also. Yes, sir. So during the incision biopsy, so what do you expect? It will be more indurated or it will be bleeding more. What do you expect? It will be bleeding, sir. So, how will you control the bleeding? Uh, if we do it in an operation theater, we can use a cautery, sir. Hmm. To control. The better thing is to avoid using cautery. If at all you want to use a cautery, you can use a bipolar, or otherwise, you put a simple stitch so that the lesion will be compressed, the bleeding vessels will be compressed. Definitely, yes, you expect a bleeding thing. Yes, sir. Okay. And. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> You want to do what are the imagings you want to do here? Imaging is a CT facial bone, sir, with 3D reconstruction. Okay, what else? Any role of metastatic workup, CT chest you want to do? CT, CT chest, since di if diagnosis is basal cell carcinoma, mostly we don't need CT chest. A chest X ray usually suffices. Okay, if so if the histology comes as. Uh, BCC, you need not take a CT chest. Suppose if it is a melanoma, if the thing comes as a nodular melanoma. We have to do a staging investigation, sir. We have to do CT chest. What else? CT chest, ultrasound, abdomen and pelvis. So where where, where do these melanomas spread to alt, uh, abdomen? Liver, sir. Liver. So what other investigations you want to take? Suppose it is BCC only. So what other... Things you want to do other than uh, this uh, facial bone reconstruction? Anything else? So, how do you want to manage the manage the thing? Manage the problem? We'll discuss in tumor board, sir. In this case. Okay. So, what do you expect? So, we'll discuss the case with the plastic surgeon, ENT, surgical oncologist, and uh, medical oncologist, sir. No, that's fine. What could be the plan? Discussion is, discussion is fine. What is the discussion for what? 
proceeding with either surgical management or uh, medical correct, management. Correct. What is the planning? <laughs> planning of treatment is fine. What is your impression about this? Supposing if you are in the tumor ward, <laughs> what will you do? What are the options available for you? Sir, either we can do a white local excision of the tumor with the reconstruction, sir. Or uh, radiotherapy can be given, sir. Chem it's chemo-resistant, so okay, radiotherapy can be given, sir. So what do you expect in the radiotherapy? Tumor will decrease in size, sir. Sir, so it's already an ulcerated tumor. So even if it decreases in size, it will... Uh, I don't think it will decrease in size, right? It is already an ulcerated tumor. Yes. So the best thing will be a surgical management only. Yes, sir. So how do you want to how do you want to do the surgery? What kind of surgery you will be planning? Wide local excision, sir. Okay, this is almost a very wide local excision. Very wide, two centimeters. So what are the parts? What are the parts you will be removing? So what will be the deficiency? So how you are planning to reconstruct? So what are the first? Tell me what are the structures you will be removing? Uh, upper lip, sir. Hmm. The right. whole upper Almost, lip. Uh, just 20 percentage of the upper lip on the left side alone the is there, right? Lip. Yes, sir. Yeah. Then what else? Then uh, uh, right uh, nostril, uh, right ear of the nose will be removing, sir. Hmm. Right ear of the nose and even nasal septum. Hmm. Roof is not infiltrated with the growth, sir. Okay. So roof means the heart palate, right? Uh, yes, sir. So, how will you give anesthesia for this patient? Local, general? In... What general... type of anesthesia? General anesthesia or local? Is it any possibility of local? For this wide lotion, for this big lesion, local anesthesia is difficult. Difficult. So, what type of anesthesia? Uh, general anesthesia? So how, how will you put the tube here? Patient is having a oral cavity lesion. Yes. And even the nose is also a problem. So how will you put a... What route you are planning to do? Endotric. So you can do an elective tracheostomy. Okay, sir. So ideal thing for such head and neck cases where you are going to involve the oral cavity and nasal cavity, better to do an elective tracheostomy and do the surgery. Yes, and during the surgery itself, we can put a rails tube. Why do you want so, to put a rails tube? In order for feeding the patients. Yeah, very good. Post-operatively, feeding is very important. Yes, sir. So you remove part of the yale of the nose, part of the lip, and uh, all these areas. So how you are planning to reconstruct? We can use a flap, sir. Free flap. What, what flap? Uh, forehead flap we can use, sir. Forehead flap is a free flap or something else? Forehead flap uh, is an axial flap. No, it's a pedicle to flap. It's pedicle. not a free flap, right? So which is better here? Free flap or a pedicle to flap? Free flap is better. So from where you can take a free flap for reconstruction of this lips? Yeah, from forearm of the patient, sir. Very good. So what is that flap called as? Radial flap. Radial? RFFF. What is that? Radial forearm free flap. Yes, sir. So you take a radial forearm free flap and uh, what do you want to do with that? What is the difference between a medical flap and a free flap here? Free flap, we have to do microanastomosis with the recipient tablet. So, uh, let's let's apply the sir. So what is the problem? You told the patient is diabetic, right? Yes, sir. So diabetes will have flap loss. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> So what will be the arteries you will be anastomosing with this? This uh, You take the radial artery and anastomose with which, which artery here? Uh, superior labial artery, sir. Branch yeah, superior, labial, yeah. superior labial artery will be gone. It's already gone completely. So you have to anastomose with the trunk of the facial artery. Okay, sir. Along the inferior part of the mandible. Yes, sir. So what uh, you, you have done the surgery, then yes, uh, you have... You have everything wound has healed. So what do you want to do? Any adjuvant treatment is there? We'll look for the biopsy report, sir. If okay. The what, tumor... what are the things you will see in the biopsy? Mark, if the margins are free of the tumor, we'll see, sir. Number one, first thing, what you will see? Diagnosis. Diagnosis. Oh. Next? Then margins, sir. Next, grade. Then what is that histological type? 
Yes, sir. You told about so many types, right? Yes, sir. Next is the margin. So, what are the margins you are interested in? All the margins, whether in tumor, tumor, whether margins are free from the tumor. So, which margin is most critical? There are so many margins, no? Circumferential margin and another is the deep margin. Yes, sir. Deep, deep margin. Margin. Deep margin. So, the deep margin is most critical because circumferential margin you will be able to give, right? Because you know where is the induration is there and you can remove it. But yes, deep sir. margin is the most important thing and most critical. If the deep margin is very close or positive, recurrence will definitely happen. Yes, sir. If it is a circumferential margin also, you can do a re-excision. Yes, sir. So next thing is you see the margin. What else you want to see? Anything else? Historical type of grade versus... The grade and mitosis index, okay? Mitosis, okay, sir. Yeah. So why why do you want to see this mitosis index or uh, grade uh, everything? For uh, adjuvant planning for adjuvant therapy, sir. Okay, and also to prognosticate to prognosticate to tell the patient that uh, whether there is any recurrence is possible or not. Yes, sir. So post operatively, what are the things you will see? What are the problems in the quality of life of the patient? Difficulty in. Uh, Mastication, sir. And so breathing. Usually, <coughs> usually, mastication problems will not happen if, unless the muscles of mastication are involved and joy is involved. Oh, so, my, only thing is the patient will have a drooling of saliva. That will be there. That I think, I guess it is already there because the commissure is gone. Okay, sir. Okay, so drooling of saliva will be there. Even though you do a radial forearm free flap, which is not a functional flap, it is not a neural flap. So, yes, it can just give a support and nothing else. And next okay. thing is cosmetic disfigurement. Even though you do everything, there will be some amount of cosmetic disfigurement. Yes, sir. And the uh, oral fissure cannot be, cannot close. So yes, what sir. other flaps you know of in the oral cavity, the reconstruction of uh, lip? So uh, this is a very huge deformity. If it is a, suppose a small, small deformity, what are the things you have? Abyss flap, sir. Okay. Abyss flap. And it can be combined with another flap. What is it called? Stain flaps. Eslander. Abbey Eslander <laughs> flap. Yes, Eslander flap. Yes, so, sir. which, for example, you, I am giving you two cases, upper lip and lower lip. Which lip is easier to do? Upper lip or lower? Lower lip, sir. Lower lip. Lower lip, you can reconstruct primarily up to 20 to 30 percent. You can just primarily suture it. Yes, sir. Upper lip is always difficult. Upper lip and commissure involvement is always difficult. Yes. Any other any other flap you know of which can be used in elderly people more frequently used in elderly people? Webster's flap, sir. Okay. Any other circular flap which can be used? Carapansic flap. Carapansic flap. Have you heard of it? Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a circular flap. Yes, sir. So that can be so. These are all the some of the flaps which you have to read so that these questions will be asked in the postgraduate exam. Yes, sir. So ideal thing for this case is a radial forearm. Yes, sir. But uh, you should know about uh, various flaps also. Okay, sir. Most of the time this will come as uh, short case only. Yes, sir. But, uh, but this is a dangerous short case. Yes, sir. The discussion can go anywhere. Yes, sir. So if uh, uh, if what what other differential diagnosis clinically differential diagnosis you can think of other than BCC? Squamous cell carcinoma, sir. Okay. Ma ma malignant melanoma. Melanoma. Melanoma is more appropriate because uh, two years duration, very fast growing and infiltrating everything. Okay. So any, what, is any question, what is amelanotic melanoma? Uh, melanoma will be present, sir, but without any pigmentation. Okay. What Can you have the squamous uh, component in this? If there is a squamous component, how do you think this will behave? And how do you think you'll be able to treat this? If squamous component is there, this will uh, progress very rapidly, sir, relatively than basal cell carcinoma. And met metastasis, likely of metastasis also will be more, sir. So the treatment is more towards to the aggressive. treatment of squamous cell carcinoma and should be more aggressive. Yes, sir. Okay. Now to Thank embrace, you. sir, for the nose, what do we do, sir, in this case? The lip, Dr. Ibrahim, sir? Yes, sir. For the nose, it has infiltrated gone into the nose. So, what is that? What will you do for that one? 
So that is very difficult part, sir. We cannot uh, reconstruct the filtrum and the ale of the nose. So better, better option will be to cut the infiltrated part and suture the mucosal and the skin part primarily. So that will be the ideal thing. So definitely there will be some amount of cosmetic disfigurement. Yes, sir. So for her, for this age, the quality of life, most important thing is one is disease free. Next thing is the closure of the oral commissure. So if you can give a good oral commissure, that itself will give a better quality of life. Yes, sir. What is cancra moris? Uh, yes, sir. Moris? What is that? For due to uh, chronic smoking, I don't remember exactly, sir. But I had heard. Can you can you keep a differential diagnosis of cancra moris here in this patient? Cancromolis is there basically an inflammatory pathology. Okay, sir. Where there is loss of the tissue is there. Okay, sir. One other area which is lost is the lips. Yes, sir. So like this type, you know, if you do not find the margins which are there, the edge of this ulcer, like roll type, if yes, it is sir. not there, then you can put a differential diagnosis of the cancromolis also. Okay, sir. Okay. Now, tell when you are doing the microvascular flap, how many anastomosis you have to carry out and what is the way you carry out the anastomosis? End to end anastomosis, sir. No, there's artery is there and the vein is there. So which one you will do first? Vein will do first and followed by artery, sir. You will always do the veins first and yes, one sir. vein or more veins. Not sure, sir. So usually, like when is how many at least, veins at least two veins should be used. Okay, at least the two veins should be used. Okay. And the artery. Yes, sir. Now tell how will you know that this flap is a good flap? What are the various techniques to know that you have taken a flap and this is going to survive? Intraoperative and the postoperative, yeah. The flap which has its inherent uh, pressure pressure axial flaps survive so better than random flaps, sir. No, no, so sir is know. asking only about free flap. Tell about only about free flap. With liver, gentle tissue handling, uh, meticulous dissection. No, no, no. What okay. sir is asking is how will you monitor? How will you monitor the flap is good or bad? Whether the flap perfusion is good or bad? How will you monitor it? Temperature of the flap, sir. Okay. What else? The coloration, any discoloration yes. or loss yes, of sensation. Very good. Loss of sensation. Sensation will not be there. Sensation will be very late, sir. Yeah. What else? Any infection? Infection will not happen in day one. So in day one, the main thing is, as you told, warmth is very important. Yes, sir. Next thing is the discoloration. So coloration, if the color becomes more red also, it is not good because it becomes congested. Yes, and if it becomes more pale, that means it is becoming not properly. Yes, sir. Okay, so most of the time you have to do three anastomosis. One will be the one arterial anastomosis. Okay, Next sir. thing will be there will be a vena committantes. Usually there will be two veins on either side of the artery. Okay, sir. So the, they are called as a vena committantes. So they have to be done separately. So in okay. this area, one thing is the facial artery and facial vein. And another thing is you can use the external jugular vein. External jugular vein. Okay. External jugular vein. So this is the usual uh, practice you we do. So external jugular vein, you can do a end-to-end -end anastomosis. Facial artery and facial vein, you can do a end-to-side anastomosis. Okay, sir. So most of the time, we do the arterial first, not the vein. Because okay. we want the perfusion to happen immediately. Okay, and when you when you open the bulldog clamp of the artery, you can see the vein, the, the blood dribbling from the veins. Okay, sir. Okay, so another thing is we can have small probes like uh, pulse oximeter probes can be kept embedded close to the artery so that uh, we will know how the perfusion is, the pulsation is. Okay, sir. So another thing we have to do is we have to tell the... Uh, anesthetist or the ICU person not to you overload the patient and also not to underload. Both are dangerous. 
okay sir okay and uh, if you are the final year pg and you see flap congestion flap is congested so what you will do any bedside uh, procedure to reduce the congestion of the flap <coughs> Old fermentation. What? Is it permanent? No, sir. I don't know, sir. So you can do some multiple punctures over the flap. Okay, sir. So with a small twenty-six or twenty-four gauge needle, you make multiple punctures over the flap, okay. and the flap will start bleeding. So that will reduce the congestion, venous congestion. and you are already giving the patient you will be giving heparin low molecular or uh, heparin regular heparin that will reduce the clots or whatever it is okay sir if that is not uh, settling then you go for a redo redo surgery okay. so okay, these sir. are all the some of the ways you have to monitor so flap loss is very common even in the best hands at least uh, 40 to 50% of the flap will go for a loss some amount of loss yes sir because flap survival is not based on the operative technique or the operative surgeon it depends on the most of the time it depends upon the patient's factors yes sir whether the patient is a smoker or not diabetic or not age of the patient yes sir and so many things are there whether previous radiation has been given or not so many things are but yes, any place of endocyanin been testing there yeah sir i didn't get the question sir do you know any recent technique which is used for knowing that whether this flap will survive or not i don't know sir endocyanin so bean which is there there is a dye dye called endocyanin b that can be used and that with the green filter for, you can whether assess it is getting the, good perfusion or not okay sir so that's why during the uh, investigation i was asking you repeatedly whether you will do any other investigation any other investigation is you can do a mapping of the feeding vessels Okay, sir. With the handheld Doppler, you can do a mapping of the feeding vessels. A lot of vessels are there surrounding the area in the facial area. So you assess the feeding vessels, and you select which is of a bigger caliber. Okay, sir. So that you can plan the flap accordingly, and even we can plan the incision accordingly. Okay, sir. So when you are doing a, a planning for a flap surgery, it is better to do a handheld Doppler study of uh, the feeding vessels in the surrounding area. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mohammad, can I ask you one question, John? I just for my clarification. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, you said that you do the arterial and yeah, the first and then the veins. Is, is it for every microvascular flap? It is the same. Yes, sir. It's mo most of the time we do the same thing, sir. Arterial first and then the veins later on. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some some feel like uh, one of the they will anastomose one vein and leave one vein uh, free. Then they do the arterial and then they do the remaining vein. Okay, so ideal thing is we need to uh, initiate the perfusion of the flap as soon as possible. Okay, <clears throat> if there is involvement of the maxilla, what do you do, Brahm sir? Yes, sir. If this tumor is involved in maxilla, yes, sir. So if the tumor is involving the maxilla, we have to do at least minimum surgery will be an inferior partial maxillectomy, sir. So we we will be removing the upper jaw. along with the alveolar process and the involved tooth so before planning for that we'll do a process is also yes, so sir. a temporary process is so that once we we are uh, finishing the resection and the reconstruction we'll place the process is also and once the healing has gone and uh, the good fibrosis has happened we can place a secondary permanent process thank you thank you sir thank you sir any other doubt you have in such cases kavya no sir so most of the time you won't get such cases but if such case comes unfortunately in the ward it will be definitely kept yes sir it was taken from the oncology ward sir yes sir <laughs> <laughs> you have any questions you have no sir probably such cases even will be kept for mch plastic <laughs> Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How was the presentation, sir? Very, very, very nice. Very nice. Very good presentation, sir. Thank you, sir. Can I will, sir? Can I, sir? Anything, sir? Can we close, sir? Yeah, I think yeah. She has done really good. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, yes, sir. Madhu, sir.
Well, she's presentation was very good, sir. We were quite happy with the presentation. Very systematic, quite informative, and quite knowledgeable. She has really worked on the case. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. The teacher also. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Prime Minister. Thank you, Kanna, sir. And uh, I think it's quite late. Others have started leaving. Uh, we call this session a close, and we'll meet on next Friday. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you